All right, let's see if it worked this time. Hello? Are we good? Don't mind the audio. It's it's loading. It's doing a load thing. Fingers crossed. I'm sipping tea. Hey, there we go. Hey, hey, hey. Holy, holy, me noy. Hi, hello. Okay. I'm sipping tea. Hey, there we go. Hey, hey, hey. Holy, holy. Success. Great success. All right. Um, tweet out a thing. All right. I mean, I didn't even tweet out a thing. I don't care. I'm gonna watch Candace Owens. Nobody, nobody's gonna be happy. Especially not me. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Thanks for joining me. You didn't get Twitch notifications? Man, I don't know what to tell you. I get to watch Candace Owens today. I'm not coming on camera because I, it's just gonna be me making annoyed faces at you guys. You know, whatever. Um, where's my... I haven't done a good job setting myself up. Hey, there's, there's, there it is. I found. This is a soundtrack to Heartbound, by the way. Pirate Software was kind enough to put this out for anybody to use for streaming stuff. I figured it'd make some pretty solid starting music and some rad fight music. Hell yeah. I guess they make all of it in-house. <sighs> okay. I'm still setting up so momentarily. wanted to check it out. I hope everybody's having a good day. I hope everybody had a good weekend thing. Whatever it was. Holidays. Whatever holidays you happen to have. I hope you had a good one of that holiday. Let me make sure my pen's working. Okay, my pen is working. I'm gonna do some goblins because people wanted versions of their little guys as my type of little guys. I'm gonna do a couple of those. It was cool of you to stick with the gang. All right, I gotta grab. I gotta grab. Where did I save those? Did I save them on a? Oh, wait. hold on. I think I think Puck's gonna be napping behind me. I think that's the play. Oh my god, plug in please. Ugh. There we go. Don't you love when I'm just fucking around for the first like 20 minutes of a stream and not actually counts. Don't worry about it. Alright, um, I'm pretty sure I put it in editing resources. Yeah, goblin emotes. There we go, here's all of our goblins. Now, my problem is, is I don't- Oh, some music too loud. Is that better? I'm, I'm gonna have to flip it around in a minute anyway, but, um... I, uh... I, um... I don't know which ones they want. I've forgotten. I think they told me in the Discord. Well, that's- I'm just gonna go check the Discord. Um... I feel like if I just search me saying... Uh, wait, 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 hold on, no, no, no. From... No, that's not the day. Which ones? 
Nope. Nope. Uh. Want. Uh, nope. What if I check? Because I think Mania wanted them. What if I check Mania and I check images? As. Image. This is how I find stuff, by the way. It was like a week or two ago, wasn't it? God, we talk in the Discord a lot. <laughs> Jesus. Maybe it was just in our chat. Maybe she just messaged. Maybe she DM'd me. I don't remember. I yell at her for not being here. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. We're getting back to art streams, and I'm happy about that. What about you guys? How do you feel about it? Somebody sent- some anonymous account sent me somebody's docs information, and I was just like, bro, what the fuck? I didn't say anything. I didn't respond to it, obviously, because I'm not a f***ing chode. Like, I'm not an idiot. But, like, why would you even respond? But yeah, they doxed- they doxed one of the- somebody sent me the doxes. One of the Nazis that's trying to harass me online. I- I don't- I don't know which one people want. But, um... I just ask her again. What would they even gain by sending you their information? Uh, um... So... This is- I'm making an assumption, right? Um... Which goblins did you want? Which goblins did you want? Question mark. I, I um. So again, this is like a little bit of an assumption on my part, but usually when somebody sends you docs information, it, they are thinking that they're going that it action alone is going to like instigate you to do something with that information. And so specifically, if you're being, like, harassed and somebody sends you the docs of somebody who's harassing you, it's generally... I would suspect that the individual sending that docs information is trying to instigate you into, into putting the information out and thus, like, making whatever shit show is going on, like, escalating the situation. That would be what my assumption was. They're trying, like, it's trolling, they're trying to make it worse and watch things explode and yada 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 yada. I mean, they might be well-intentioned, I don't know, but I usually don't think, like, to give you some kind of weapon against the person who's harassing you or whatever, which, I mean, Sure, maybe it's well-intentioned, but I I just don't view doxing as, as well-intentioned ever. <clears throat> alright, how does it look in here? Does it look okay? I think this looks alright. For the sake of what we're doing. Um, I don't know which- I don't know which- I don't know which goblins I need to get. I should probably check the layers, though. Yes. Do this. Cool. So they gave you a firebomb not realizing you're not the arsonist they're looking for? Yeah, kind of. Um. It. 
I try not to assume the worst, but if somebody's doxing, it's kind of hard not to... Like, that's kind of ill-intentioned inherently. I have- I didn't even bother to go to check this to verify it or anything, I'm not- I don't- Cause that's like a whole other rigmarole that I'm not interested in. Yes it is! It is a gobbo, it is a cabo. I'll make sure I have the right- is the right pencil? Yeah, it is. Mm, yeah, 13 is fine. Okay. Uh, I'm going to erase... I'm just going to see if I start. I'm going to erase this part of it because obviously they're going to want different ears and different hair. I mean, the ears are going to be pretty much the same, but we're going to get rid of the tick out of the ear. Possibly being useful if you wanted to serve a cease and desist, but you're not that kind of goblin to be ethical. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I view internet harassment and I view people like Nazis and transphobes as more than just like internet tiff. But like, you're right. As in, like, I don't. It's not my, not my type of, not my way of handling things. And yeah, not yeah. I'm, If I needed to turn them into the authorities for something, then I think that would be useful, but that's not a dox, right? Yeah, I'm certainly not going to go out of my way to protect this person but I'm also not going to be utilizing their docs for anything because there's nothing for me to use it for, currently. Again, like I said, if I needed to go to the police or something, then sure. Um, then I can utilize it, but... I usually get the feeling a lot of the times when people just unprompted send you somebody's information like that, it's trouble. Trouble that I am not interested in. Which is probably why they used an anonymous account, right? But like, I guess that's one of the things like transphobes and Nazis and stuff don't understand. It's like that you, you think you're actually anonymous. You actually think that people can't fucking fight, figure out who you are. You think you can get away with whatever you want and you can't. Like, people know, people will figure it out. If you cause enough problem to the wrong type of person, people will get your information. I think yours is good enough, Athens, to be honest. <laughs> to be quite frank. Um, I guess I should take, like, a little notebook out off to the side. Oh, poor you taking a snooze. Boop. Um, you guys ready to start with Candace Owens? Shall we get- shall we get started? So, I have a discussion, uh, it's either gonna be live or it's gonna be recorded, I don't know, but we got Dr. Dan coming on with me and Mania to discuss this Candace Owens video, but the video is an hour long, and I really don't know if we're gonna get through an entire video, especially not in one sitting, so I was thinking about seeing if there's places where I can segment this, or if I can pick out, like, four different main talking points that Candace has. Um, and, and go from there. So we're gonna, we're gonna listen to the video. Obviously we'll like, play, like stop and talk about it a little bit. But if you guys hear like a good talking point you think needs to seriously be expounded on by professionals, you, you let me know because that's, that's what we're working on. Oh, thanks. Okay, cool. 
<laughs> no, I don't want to save the image. Copy the image. All right. Manya sent me which goblins she wanted. It's these ones. They come in. These, these guys, these little guys. Little broskies. Alright, I'm just gonna put this off to the side. So some of these are obviously very easy where it's just like, oh, okay. There's that one done. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna make a that's our this is our base now and then we're gonna make copies of it and she wants one two three four five six seven eight nine so we're gonna make nine one two three four Five, six. And then we're just going to expand our canvas a little bit. Enough. I'm just adjusting these a little bit so they're in a space that I can work with. Um, the way you expand your canvas is just to go into um, edit, no, image, um, and then resize canvas or control alt C or whatever it is that you have it at. And I'm just going to adjust, actually you know I'm going to adjust the width and I'm going to make it Seven will be good enough. So it's going to do that. And then I'm just going to merge these together. I'm going to merge this one and this one and this one. There. So when I merge these two, I can just copy these two. And then just duplicate, it's just going to duplicate them different, like a little bit differently. And you can hold shift and it'll move things over, but I'm explaining this too much when I should be looking at the Candace Owens video. Anyway, that's my, that's kind of my plan. I want to just take these things and, <clears throat> excuse me, um, hello, merge, thank you. Okay. Um, and see if we can make something comprehensible a little bit out of this Candace Owens video and make it into something that we can actually cover while all of us are, are available and around. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so I can see what I'm working with here. Sound good? You guys interested? Ooh, bacon and eggs. Yo, pass me some. I would love some bacon and eggs, please and thank you. Greatly appreciated. I still don't have alerts turned on, so if you are doing something in the alerts, I apologize. I'm not going to be paying too, too much attention. Um, I am looking, but, you know. All right, I hit play on this. All right, guys, I promised you, and here it is. I hope that you enjoy this free episode of my series, A Shot in the Dark. I wanted to give this to you guys as a gift because I believe that it is the most important work that I do here, the most important work that I do potentially in the world, <laughs> going through all of these topics, birth control, vaccines, we're not stopping, we're going to also unpack what is in our food, what is making our making us sick. And yes, they know that they are making us sick, they know that these things lead to cancer, they have always known this, and yet they are still allowed to sell us these things. Why? Well, I think you're about to find out. If you guys love this episode, and I know that you will, I want you to know that you can watch the- I don't understand why it's like, oh, they let- they they make a big deal about the, um, about the conspiracies or, like, big pharma or, like, that there's, like, these things that are coming for you, right? 
and like the oh the fda is like a corrupt group and then are like but they let you have this instead of blah 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 it's like very bizarre it's a to me it's a weird take it's it's just an odd way to even start your starting off your video that's supposed to be informative with a mysterious they is probably not what i would think is good a good idea but you know i mean i guess like yes unless you're doing it doing as as a lap but you know whatever the rest of the series exclusively on daily wire plus click the link in the description to watch no i will not you can't make me I'm on a journey to ask the questions that it feels like we're not supposed to ask, to look at the data that we're maybe not meant to see. I mean, I'm not an expert, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, but I am a mother. It's not advice that I want to give people, it's simply the courage to ask questions. I just want us all to be informed so that we never I'm have to take the hair a shot in the dark. Bit. Wow, oh wow, episode one of A Shot in the Dark, now on The Daily Wire. I am wow, beyond wow, excited we right now. I came in essentially skipping into work today because this has been a dream of mine and now it is about to be realized. So let's just back this up. If you are a person and you were formerly watching A Shot in the Dark on Parlor, you know exactly what this is about. I want you to know that we are going to recreate those first 10 or 11 episodes. And if you are new to this series, maybe somebody sent it to you and said you should take a look at this. Maybe you're a mom-to-be, you're already a parent, you're expecting a second child. Um, first and foremost, I want you to know I am that not. I know that I, I am none of those things. politics am an acquired taste. If you are somebody who disagrees with me politically, I don't care. I'm glad that you are here. Uh, this is not going to be political whatsoever. Um, I think that what I do with The Shot in the Dark, which we are obviously going to get into, is without a doubt the most important work that I have ever done. It this has been my most important contribution, I think, to the world uh, because it concerns our children. And I have been transformed as a parent. I have been transformed by my experiences with vaccines and with Big Pharma and this. Transformed. I, it's, it's very like religious language spooky language spooky language it's uh it's very grandiose don't you think the the big conspiracy the big they the big ooh, look out oh my god i don't know i don't like it's very rhetorical if that makes sense like it's got a lot of rhetoric already I don't know. It's not... I get that I'm not the target audience, but it concerns me for, like, for, the, like, on behalf of the target audience when you start hearing that kind of language all over the place. Because I think the target audience doesn't recognize that that's the type of language that it is. It's the most important series she will ever make, if that's not hyping enough. Well, she says that, but then she explains how this she's recreating a thing that already exists. Like she's already like the series already exists and she's just doing it again. And it's a dream of hers that's gonna be fulfilled, but she already did it. I don't get it. I don't <laughs> Am I just confused? I guess I'm not really that deep into the Candace Owens lore, you know what I mean? <laughs> We do have an episode of Debate Hub coming up in next week, I believe. Well, let me double check. Um, over on YouTube, that is, I have two people who have studied psychology coming on to discuss the conspiracy of psychology um, and, like, sort of the mindset of how you get into becoming a, uh, like, how do you even become a conspiracy theorist, right? Like, how do you, how do you get there? What type of mindset do you need? What, and, and what kind of mindset do you need to get out of it? Like, if you think you might be in a conspiracy, what, how do you, how would you recognize it? Yeah, it's in six days. So yeah, next week. So definitely go over there and check that out. It's going to be really good. In my opinion. I think it's going to be, it's going to be the most important thing I've ever done in my entire life. <laughs> it's. It's, we're gonna figure out who they are and what they want and how they're trying to hurt you. <laughs> oh my god. 
<laughs> I should start that stream off like that. Hey, welcome to the most important stream you've ever seen in your life. It's going to transform you. Conspiracy of psychology. The psychology of conspiracy. Ah, man, I don't know. This show is going to <laughs> cover so much more than just vaccines I don't know what I mean. and medicine. I want to eventually talk about food. Um, all the decisions that we are making day in and day out. Uh, but it does begin, uh, of course, with vaccines. A shot in the dark. If you are wondering what it was or how it got started, it I really think it was God's timing, uh, first and foremost, just to come right out with it. Of course it was. I do not vaccinate my children. I know that for some of you, that might seem insane. If you had asked me growing up about people that did not vaccinate their children, I would have said they are insane. Uh, the slur of calling somebody an anti-vaxxer has been tremendously effective <laughs> throughout my lifetime, and I thought it was the crazy... I'm not... I would, it's such like a benign word right so like i mean a slur is kind of there, there's like a obviously a more harsh slur and then there's like slurs that are like calling you an idiot is technically a slur if you want to get like down to the nitty-gritty of what counts at you know what i mean where it's just like it's a derogatory word for somebody and then yeah it's yeah it's a slur it's definitely a slur because anti-vaxxer comes with a lot of baggage right like a lot as it should, like, I think it deserves to come with a lot of baggage, but <laughs> when you use the word slur, you're kind of talking, the word slur has a lot of baggage to it, right? It's, you're using rhetoric for, like, <laughs> it's like using the word faith and faith, right? Do you think Candace Owens was was transformed by vaccines because she was vaccinated and so those vaccines transformed her into a lizard man? I mean, that's where I'm at. I'm having a real hard time recreating this face. I think it might be because of the hair that I chose to do this with. I kind of like that one. It's a little different, but it's kind of the same. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sl yeah, slur is not... Slur's got a lot of baggage. It implies a lot of historical hatred towards a group of people. And, like, implies oppression of a group. And, like, I, I mean, I guess anti-vaxxers are oppressed. As in, like, shut the fuck up and go sit in the corner with a dunce hat cap on. But, you know... <laughs> I don't know if those things are equatable, quite frankly. But I don't think I mean they're not... <laughs> But sure. Crunchy people who wanted their children to die um, that didn't vaccinate their children. Uh, but obviously, as I said before, your life experiences transform you. And I had a life experience that transformed me in the form of me being vax injured. But how was this God's timing? Okay, um, well, I had my child and I had one of the COVID babies. All right, I think my that's going to be now. I think that's going to be a term. I'll get this kid off the screen. A I'm not interested old, in your child. Very healthy. And get out of here. Really get your kid out of here. I don't want to talk about your kid. COVID, it was All right. Um, what is vax? What is vaccine injured? Like, what does that mean? I feel like that's like a good question to to ask if we're going to be looking at this video, right? Defining technically what that means, right? Like, cause I like I imagine like with a lot of stuff like this, there's like a there's the technical terminology. And then there's going to be the terminology that they're use that they are using. Yeah, listen, we can't pick on God's timing. That's a whole other. <laughs> that's a whole other thing. Um. There you go. What do you guys think? Do you guys think I did a good job? I think these look pretty good. Time to paint. I just don't... I don't buy... I don't buy it. I don't, I don't buy it. Do a bad job. Damn. It's me. I am the bad guy. Um, I, I don't... I think what is Vax injured is going to be a good question to be brought up. Um, and I, I'm gonna, this is still part of her intro, so I'm kind of 
making the assumption that she's likely going to maybe since we'll look a little bit more olive a little bit lighter that's better um That maybe she's gonna go into a little bit more, but if we're gonna make a note of of Vax injured, um, I should have probably taken out a piece of paper or something and wrote down it. Well, I don't want to write down this timestamp yet because it hasn't actually started. Because there's like enough problems with just this the, the rhetoric in this intro that I'm already like, uh, I'm gonna open a notepad. For my Sorry, you guys aren't gonna see my notepad. Um, it's too bad. <laughs> uh, Candace Owens uh, What is Vax injured? And then I'm going to leave a space for timestamp When I get one I assume I'm going to get one Alright Cool, got it, done yeah, let's keep going. It was unique because I think for the first time, individuals were willing to hear a different perspective on yeah. medicine, a different perspective on vaccines. First and I think a, a big reason for that was just the amount of censorship surrounding just the COVID vaccine that alerted a lot of people. Uh, for example, we were getting in trouble if we shared our lived experiences on social media. So what do I mean? Obviously, this is no longer, it doesn't seem to be a policy on Facebook, but if you had marched in and you were, I am definitely want to be the first person in line to get the vaccine, and that's totally fine if you were that person. But if you then got the vaccine and then went onto Facebook uh, during this time of mass censorship and you said, oh man, I was sick for three days after it, it. I feel worse after getting the vaccine. Your account could have been hit. Your account could have been frozen. Uh, Facebook had this unique policy at that time, but even if what you were sharing was true, if it created vaccine hesitancy, then they could take out your account. And I think for a lot of people, it just made them uncomfortable because you you want people to be able to talk freely about their um, experiences. So I think the timing of me creating a shot. So this is a silly thing that I don't think we're going to end up talking about, and it's that th this whole mass censorship and, like, oh, the, for the first time people were questioning medicine. Like, no, 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 no. There were protesters when the polio vaccine came out. Like, that, this <laughs> history is a thing that exists. Uh, things have happened in the past. Time uh, goes by, allegedly, from, from our experience, uh, from our perspective. So, no, this is, this is a little bit of nonsense, but this little bit that she throws in here about, like, oh, if you talked about your lived experience, your account could get hit. That wasn't happening to, like, Joe Schmo random account, right? That was, that would be happening to, like, this, we're back to the Amber Heard problem of being like, oh, if it happens to me, it could happen to you. It could happen to any of us, and it's like, no, not most people get to write about their bullshit in the in an op-ed in the Washington Post, right? You're not, you're not most people. I, I don't know, you don't get to pretend that because it could have happened to you, because you have a mass influence, that you are, that it's suddenly censorship happening to everybody. That's not how it works. But there's also... A, a degree of, of, how do I explore, how, how would I put this? Um, when you have a large following, which Candace Owens had, right? Candace Owens has a large following. Whether or not you intend your words to mean something or not, your words will have an influence, right? So if you say something, like what Candace said, for example, this idea that, oh, I got sick after taking the vaccine, you're responsible for how that's going to be interpreted by the large following that you have, right? And it's that's that I talk about this on a regular basis. I talk about how, no, 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 you have to understand that there is a, um, there's a responsibility to your content as soon as you hit post as soon as you hit go live 
As soon as that is up, you are responsible for it, even if it doesn't do what you intended. And that's why you want to be cautious and be careful and think about what you're posting before you post it, right? It, that, like, that's just the way it is. It, if you want the privilege of the platform, you have to take on the responsibility that comes with it. It's not complicated. Like, this is not rocket science that I'm describing. <laughs> Oh, she definitely does. Candace in particular does want that, yes. But I'm just speaking in general. That's the thing in the UK. At least you are told before they give you the COVID vaccine that you are likely to feel unwell for a few days and have a sore arm. Yeah, they told us that in Canada as well. That was also like standard procedure. That's normal. That's what you that's what happens when you get the flu shot. That's what happens when you get your shots in school. Like, sometimes a kid misses out on the next day or two of school because they weren't feeling well after the, after the injection. It's not, it's not that weird. Hell, in junior high, the, when you got the shot in grade 7, the 8th graders would run around and punch the arms of all the, all the 7th graders because the 8th graders had that done to them the year before. And so everybody would be punching everybody in the arm because, we, because everybody was assholes because they were 12. <laughs> You know what I mean? I don't... <laughs> you know, kids doing kid things. Actually, for the most part, like, it was mostly just the boys punching each other. There was a couple of girls that did it, but it was, like, most, like, mo for the most part, the boys didn't punch the girls. And the girls didn't punch the boys. It was mostly just guy on guy. And then once in a while, a girl would get thrown in there. <laughs> of, like, another girl. But it was usually just boys punching each other. <laughs> For funsies, I guess. I don't know. I wasn't the one punching everybody. I'm too short. I can't reach the injection site. Guy on guy. Ooh, oh my. Shot in the dark. And again, it was not about COVID. We never discussed the COVID vaccine whatsoever. Um, it just was, it was the perfect time. People, I think, were more receptive to the message. And the message really is that I am not going to try to convince you not to vaccinate your children. Uh, that is not what I am being tasked with. It is not what is in my heart or soul to do. Uh, what I want to give. No, I'm just going to tell you about the big bad they that are going around giving you things that they allowing you to get stuff that is gonna give you cancer but you know i'm just gonna tell you this thing gives you cancer you can do whatever you want yeah like that's to me that's dishonest that's just straight up marketing <laughs> hi low energy welcome we're watching candace owens because i gotta figure out what the, the hell i'm gonna cover uh, in the next couple of weeks you instead is information. I want you to be able to, as a parent, not do something under duress, not do something because somebody is saying to you, if you don't, your children are going to die. That doesn't seem like a healthy- But you said at the beginning of this that they are giving us things that are going to give you cancer. That is you telling people something under duress. That's you. You're doing the thing. You are the bad guy. It was you the whole time. <laughs> it, it baffles me. There's a live chat replay to this. I, this was... The relationship to have with anybody. COVID vaccines have affected so many people's lives. They are getting multiple diseases. I don't think it's live. I think it's pre-recorded, but please correct me if I'm wrong. Baby blue eyes. He said that yesterday. Gutted. Ugh. All right. I want you. I don't want to know. I don't know. I don't want to know. Make an this. informed no. decision no, to actually know what the risks were before they ever even came up with the vaccine. How many people were actually dying of this illness, and what the risks are today? How many people are becoming ill with this? How effective has the vaccine even been? And I think that's fair. I don't think I don't even understand how it could be plausible for an individual to say that parents don't have a right to that information. That parents should just blindly trust doctors and should blindly trust medical professionals. I want you to have enough information that you feel confident as a new parent or as an old parent talking to your pediatrician and saying, well, what about this? Um, <laughs> yeah, nobody's saying don't learn or educate or inform yourself. What people are saying is 
you're not educated enough to understand the data you're trying to read. And you're being argumentative rather than trying to educate yourself, right? You're setting people up for failure. Um, again, this is, I'm going into stuff that I'm probably, that we're not going to go into um, when we have uh, Dr. Dan on to talk about this, because we are going to exclusively be talking about, like, what is said about the vaccines and, like, what she says about probably COVID numbers a little bit. But um, I figured I'd take the opportunity to talk to you guys about it now, because, you know, extra content or whatever. <laughs> I mean, I can't just listen to this and not be like, Ugh. this, this is my face. This is my face right now. This one. This, this. <laughs> Fucking Christ. Yeah, in Canada, they were telling you to talk to your doctor if you had doubts about it, but at least, and that's what you were hearing people say. Yeah, yeah, I, it's such an... I don't even know how uniquely American this experience is at this point, because it kind of feels very like, this is an America problem. This is an America thing. And it's like kind of leaking out into other places a little bit here and there, right? And like with the, in Canada specifically, like with the truckers, right? The trucker protests, but that didn't really get very far, or do very much. And I think the Canadian politician for the Conservative Party, um, Paul Vieille, is a knockoff of like Boris Johnson um and Boris Johnson is like a like a less extreme version of Trump like Trump is like the thing that came out in the 90s and Boris is the thing that came out in the 80s so Boris was radical and Trump was extreme and Paul Vieille is just like 20 years behind everybody else because you can't get away with that kind of shit in Canada <laughs> <laughs> Radical. Groovy. We are living in a very odd time for the political sphere, it feels like. To me, at least. I'm, what do I know, though? I'm... What do I know? <laughs> it just feels that way. I don't know how true that is. That's just how I feel about it. But at least I'm willing to acknowledge that that's just how I feel, not that that's actually true. It just feels like we live in a weird space. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. Caffeine-free diet Trump. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna let her keep going with her goofy, goofy... pundit rhetoric. <laughs> I see this information on the CDC website, and by the way, just to tell you right off the bat, I am not going to use shady sources throughout this process. You're not going to be, well, I found this on Reddit and I want to know what you think about this. I want to be above and beyond here. I want to use mainstream sources. I want to use CDC data. I want to take a look at the FDA inserts when I talk about what can happen if you give your child a vaccine. These are things that the pediatrician does not supply you, which should be astounding to you you should think to yourself what? you can't imagine people being able to give your child a snack and then saying so she's she's setting up that that pediatricians are lying to you and not and or are not giving you information um i i don't okay so i don't mean to be rude except i do because i don't fucking care you do need to do work and research as a parent like you're the adult you can't expect everybody to be food spoon feeding you literally everything, right? The pamphlets are there for a reason. The doctor will tell you where to look up the information. If you do not look up the information, that is on you. There was a lady I worked with once who was sitting around bitching about vaccines and saying that her kid had like was had an issue because that kid was vaccinated because the kid had an allergic reaction, and it ended up like fucking up the kids like learning abilities or something like that I, I don't remember what the exact problem that that she had or that that kid had was that she described and i stopped because she was just saying this in the middle of the office like it's an appropriate conversation for work and i said well your son had an allergy he's like yeah my son had an allergy and i'm like and you didn't know about this out al like the al you didn't know about the allergy beforehand 
because the kid got this vaccine in like junior high and you get allergy tested in Canada at like it's like you get vaccines well before that so I'm like, what about this one vaccine? Was I'm like, did your son have this prior vaccine? And she was like, oh, yeah, he got this prior one. And we found out and like the doctor told me that he's got this allergy. And so this, this, the, they, they gave him this vaccine at school and he had an allergic reaction. And I'm like, but they send you home with paperwork. Did your, you signed the paperwork. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, y you're the parent. It's your responsibility to know what your kid is allergic to. The, the school sent you home with paperwork for you to sign off that your kid could get the vaccine. And then your kid went to school with the signed paperwork that you signed. And then they gave him the vaccine because you signed off that there weren't going to be any issues for him getting the vaccine. And then you're blaming everybody fucking else. That's you. Your it's your, re your fault that your kid is fucked up now. <laughs> She did not like that I told her that, that was, it was her fault. She was not happy about that. And, you know, maybe I could have been nicer about it, but I was getting kind of frustrated at that point because this lady was kind of also a bitch anyway. But... <laughs> There's a... Like, it's your responsibility as a parent to, to know medical things about your child. And if you don't know medical things about your child, go and learn about them. Right? Go to your pediatrician and be like, hey, I want to get my kid tested for X, Y, and Z. Or, hey, I need to make sure that my kid has no allergies. Let's go do testing for X, Y, and Z. It's a good, like, it's a good idea to get your kid tested for allergy, like, food allergies at a very young age. So that way you kind of, like, don't get surprised by a peanut allergy. Right? It's, like, this, this lady took zero responsibility and failed her child and is sitting around being like, oh, the vaccines are the problem. And it's like, no, you're the problem. You did this. This was your responsibility and you failed. You got your child injured. You hurt your kid because you were negligent towards your job as a parent to keep your kid safe and know about them. Anyway. That was a story. <laughs> Oh, vaccines are bad. Shut the fuck up. You're bad. You, it's you. You're the bad. You're the bad guy. You did the bad thing. You did that thing called neglect. I knew this other guy that I was working with who's like, his daughter was like, not a very good parent. Like, she would, like, leave the her kids with him and stuff a lot and like, just disappear and not come back. Like, that kind of shit. And like, not be in good positions. And he was like, but I can't, I can't take care of these kids this way. I don't have, like, the, I don't have, like, I'm working and yada, yada, yada. And he was, like, talking about how he didn't know what to do. And, like, he knew the kids were in a bad situation. And he's like, and so I said, so call. So, so call, C so call the police, call CPS, go, like, write it, go talk to them and see what you can do. And he's like, he wouldn't do it. And he wouldn't do it because he cared about the kids and wanted to be allowed to see them and be around them. And I'm like, and he's like, if I take them away from their, like, this situation, they're not gonna like me anymore. And I'm like, oh my fucking god. And I'm like, then you're the bad guy. You're not protecting these kids in a scenario where you know, that you know is inherently bad for them, that is putting them in danger, and is causing them emotional and physical stress and injuries. And you don't want to because they won't like you because of your feelings, the way you, like, are, you, you're, you're the adult. You're supposed to put the kid's safety in prior, are, are the priority over top of your feelings about whether or not they're gonna like you. I'm like, if, once they get older, they, maybe they'll understand. And yeah, maybe they won't like you right now because they don't understand what's going on. But you, well, guess what? You're the fucking adult. Now you're the one putting them in danger because of how you feel about it. Like, you would rather those kids get hurt. I'm like, I have lost all respect for anybody who says something like that. I can't. I can't. I cannot handle that kind of shit. I'm just like, wow. Fucking wow. What?
Uh, yeah, it, and CPS doesn't work like that, right? They, they want the kids to be as comfortable as they can. So what you do is when you report it, you go in and you discuss with them the scenario and what can happen and what's best for the kids. You, if, if you're not the one causing them harm and you're trying to help them and they're still part of your family, then you, like, it's likely that they, that CPS is going to want to work with you because they're there to help the kids too. Like, what are you even talking about? It's so infuriating. I can't handle when people just let kids get hurt for no fucking good reason. And no, your feelings are not a good fucking reason. <laughs> you're, you're literally the adult in the room. This is- you have one job. You have one job! <laughs> Ugh. Hate. Hate, hate, hate. Hate, hate. Anyway, Candace Owens is saying something dumb. What's in the snack? What's what are the ingredients? And I'm saying, we're not allowed to actually tell you. Just eat the snack. You would say that. That makes no sense. Nobody's so saying So before that. I get into uh, my background story with nice vaccines and what caused, I guess, my radical shift in my position, I also just want to talk about gut instincts because I think it's really important uh, that parents don't just ignore their subconscious. We're, we're basically told just ignore your gut instincts and ignore that voice in your head that's saying this is wrong, wrong, wrong. No, your gut instinct when it comes to parenting is supreme. I think especially if you're a mom, I think what? God has designed us in a way uh, where we are just so attached to our children and so plugged in that we, if you're like me, I, I know the octave of my child's cry. I know when he's actually hurt, when he's not really hurt, when he's playing it up. Um, that's not a, that's not, that's not an instinct. That is, that is listening and comprehension. That is, that is listening comprehension. That is, and experience and practice. That's not instinctual. You had to listen to your kid for a long period of time and you got to hear them, and you learned how to communicate with your child. That's not instinctual. It might feel instinctual. It might feel that way. It might feel like a very natural thing for you to do, but it is a matter of listening, learning, and practicing. You could swap a baby out, and nobody would fucking know. You can look at the ingredients in vaccine, the doctor wouldn't tell you you can't know what's in this. Yeah, no doctor would do that. I don't know where she's finding doctors that do this. I don't know what she's talking about. It's it's a straw man. She's just making up a story in her head that that's never been the case. And when he just wants attention, uh, we God gave us that. We we actually no. possess that instinct for a reason. That's not an so instinct. There were a couple of things to me even before I decided I was fully against vaccines that I registered as weird. Uh, first and foremost, if you know anything about my backstory, I did not grow up with any money. Um, and if you are surrounded by people who don't have a lot of money, one thing that you will know that is true is that poor people always stick to the vaccine schedule. Um, they 100% trust their doctors. They, I, I do not know a single person growing up in my environment that did not get vaccines. Something that was weird is that as my circles became wealthier, I was suddenly being exposed to more people that didn't vaccinate their children. Uh, that instantly registered to me as weird. And I'm talking about, I could name for you what? celebrities that do not vaccinate their children. Um, very wealthy, well-known celebrities who choose not to vaccinate their children. So just an uh, instant question that I think I started asking myself uh -huh. is why? That's if these question. are life-saving vaccines and people are going to die without them, why would somebody who has more education and more access to resources uh, choose uh, 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 to... Uh, hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put out real, real quick right here. Uh, money does not inherently equal better education. It means that you have access to the resources that you could have spent time going to school. It also doesn't inherently make you intelligent. If being rich made you intelligent, then any, like, inherently, then any rich person could give away all of their money and be rich again within a relatively short period of time. And they will not do that. They won't even risk doing that. You were talking about people born into money. Uh, short answer, privilege, but um, you when you can afford to get sick, you will take less of a 
you'll, you're more willing to take risks that you think money can solve the problem too. And sadly, that problem is not always solvable with money when you get when you get ill. Also, privileged people think they're special. So they're like, oh, the vaccine is for the masses, so, like, everybody doesn't get sick, but I don't need to have it. There's also, like, a few weird conspiracy theories in within, like, rich people, right? Where it's, like, blood purity. Like, that's a thing that, rich, like, there's, con like, it's not like being, like I said, being rich doesn't, me in like, inherently mean you're immune to the same dumb kind of stupid bullshit, right? So you can definitely be a conspiracy theorist and be rich. It doesn't preclude, I guess is the word I'm looking for. It doesn't pre preclude you from anything. If being rich equaled intelligence, then America would be a major leader in education, yet it's clearly severely lagging behind. Yeah, that's a good point. Opt out of this. Doesn't make sense. So that's just a simple gut instinct question that I started to ask myself, which I thought was quite odd. Uh, a second I think it's thing a good is question. I realize that there are such unbelievably conflicting messages when you become a new parent. And I'm going to give you an example. We're not going to talk about DTAP today, but just let's just talk about the ingredients that are in the DTAP shot very briefly because I want to make a, a point. <laughs> So this okay. is from the CDC website, and it just tells you what's in the DTaP vaccine. Uh, and it says that there is a 0.5 milliliter dose, which contains 6.7 limit of flocculation of diphtheria toxoid. And then it says that it, ha it contains tetanus toxoid and not more than 0.17 of a milligram of aluminum. It then says the residual formaldehyde content is a less than 0.02%, and the vaccine contains a trace amount of thimerosal. Now, guys, I want to also just say to you that you, as we go through these things, I am certain that I'm going to mispronounce ingredients and all of these words. It is totally fine. I don't want you to allow people to convince you that if you can't say these terms, that means you don't know what you're talking about. That is one of the things that- I, I mean, find, it is kind uh, of an be... indicator. If you're if you are putting on a show to try to educate people and you're not gonna bother learning how to say it, why should anybody take you seriously? I think that's a reasonable question. I think that's a reasonable, like, eyebrow raising awe. If you're just talking, and, like, you're just, like, having a conversation with, like, your family members or whatever. Sure, I get that. That I can understand. But if you're putting on a show, like, what are you talking about? I mispronounce shit all the time. And that's usually because, you know, I don't know how to read. But I'm not sitting here pretending to fucking educate people. I'm not sitting here with, like, part of, like, a fucking big-ass company with way more money than they ever should fucking have. Pretending like I'm putting on some kind of major educational content. Thank you for the save. I think these are done. What do you guys think? think these look okay? I think they look pretty good. Uh, what am I gonna save these at? Um, I'll save them in, in goblin emotes. Monia, Monia Gabos. Call it that. We'll save it as a creative document so she can take them and do as she pleases. Yay! We did it. Yeah, you know, I'm not trying to pretend that I'm like me not being able to read words is a running joke. Like, Dapper legit brings me on to read things incorrectly. <laughs> I try my best. Anyway, I think it's silly. This is silly. What she's saying right now is silly. I think that if somebody doesn't like... If you're gonna pretend... Again, like I said, if you're just in a... If you're just in a conversation with people, sure... Right? Like, I get that. If you're just having a conversation. 
and people don't know a word. I think it's I think it's silly to screw like to 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 dismiss them because they've mispronounced them. But I don't think I think contextually it's important to be extra critical when it comes to somebody like Candace, for example, or and, and like or Bill Nye the science guy. If he's mispronouncing what he's talking about and he's presenting himself as he's trying to educate you, then I do think that's like not to totally dismiss somebody. But it is enough to raise a red flag in like a in a pro like in a programming. So like you're watching PBS or the Daily Wire, I guess. It's it's silly to me that this is supposed to be Candace's like magnum opus and she's sitting here, she doesn't even want to bother to fucking learn the words. You know what I mean? Like that's just to to me that's silly. That's silly. Aluminum or aluminium? Aluminium. Ah, lu, nin, am. <laughs> I just think it's silly. I let her go. Increasingly annoying about big pharma. It's like if you don't know how to pronounce this word, then you can't. You're no longer allowed to read it, and and that is what? complete BS. It's okay to mispronounce words. We'll start sure. getting it right as we get into this. So just look at those ingredients, you go, wow, that sounds like a lot. Is this really allowed uh, to, am I allowed to inject this in my child's arm? They say it's trace amounts, no big deal. But a conflicting message here is that they also tell you while you're pregnant that everything you do, even a trace amount, could be harmful for your child. Case in point. Yes. Um, the same CDC tells you that despite the fact that it is perfectly safe for you to give your child multiple vaccinations in one visit, which contain these aluminums, they also tell you that when you introduce your children to food, it should be just one at a time. So if you were giving your child organic food, I don't know, like peanuts, it just, just one at a time. You gotta be very careful as you're introducing new foods in case your child has an allergy. Or um, mm -hmm. my favorite is that when you're pregnant, God forbid, you have half a glass of wine. Oh my God, how could you do that? You'd be poisoning your child. Formaldehyde, totally fine. Trace amounts, a little bit of wine, not okay. That just to me registers as something that is a little what? weird. And again, I'm not advocating that women should go and drink wine or drink al consume alcohol while they're pregnant. Of course, everything, all of these things could have a downside, but it is strange that what? the messaging is that everything that you do could harm your child, but everything that we do, including injecting your child with formaldehyde and aluminums and other metals, is perfectly safe and it could not possibly bring that's, your child any harm. Even though That's not what it says. That's not what it said. That's not what you read. You tur you just took that and turned it into something completely different. What? What? That's not that's not what it said. <laughs> Vaccines carry a risk. And they said you should it's it's fine to do them all at the same time, but that saying that it's fine doesn't mean that the risk is gone. It's like this they have this risk. The risk is ostensibly the same. That's not a- what the- what the fuck? Am I crazy? Did I just not understand what she said? Did I just mishear her? Am I- am I the dumb one? And this is a problem that I have with, like, covering all the stupid shit that I cover all the time, right? I sit here and I, like, gaslight myself into thinking, like, am I the idiot? Was it me? Am I just not- I- Huh? And it's never me. It's not me. I'm- I'm not the idiot. It's- <laughs> But like it's that additional energy that I waste spending thinking that what but what if it's me? What if I just misunderstood something? I need to stop wasting that additional energy and just be like, no, nah, this person's just dumb. I was on lower energy vids the other day and was like, why do I feel like I'm smarter than somebody who used to have like intelligent conversations with people like in that intelligent like sphere like why am i not i feel like i should be the dumb person in the room here and i don't think i'm the dumb person in the room here <laughs> when something is ingested it can have a higher effect and a side effect than something injected there's a reason that it's meant to go into muscle tissue and not a vein yeah exactly there's like when you eat something it has a different effect than something that is being prescribed by a doctor to be injected it's a very silly comparison to make. If they're not equatable. Well, and on top of that. 
Um, not only are they not very equatable in that capacity, um, there's also, like, feeding your kid one thing at a time so you can look out for allergic reactions doesn't mean don't feed them a large variety within, like, a couple of days, right? Yeah, the whole serving of fruit is the same as a trace amount of something. Yeah, especially in a trace amount of a small amount to begin with. A trace, of, like an injection, is is not a lot of anything. It's not considered like a big thing as you would if you give a kid a bowl of strawberries. You know what I mean? If you get a feeder kid a peanut butter sandwich, there's more peanut butter in that peanut butter sandwich than there is trace amounts of a thing inside of the injection. So these same vaccine inserts are going to tell you the exact opposite when we get into the risks. Um, so here is just essentially, I'm just jumping in here and showing you a different link of what I'm talking about. This is the CDC website saying that there is no known safe amount of alcohol use during pregnancy or uh -huh. while trying to get pregnant. There is no safe time for alcohol use during pregnancy. All types of alcohol are equally harmful, including all wines and beer. Okay, guys? Okay. So if you have a beer, okay. you're going to really harm your child. There's no known safe amounts. Metals, totally fine. So that's something no, that is trace odd. Amounts. And I also want to just show you. No. That that, <laughs> no. What are you talking about? <laughs> what? What? That doesn't make any sense. That is not, that is not anything anybody said. What is she talking about? What is this? She's gonna actually con compare a trick. <laughs> this cr I don't even know how to I don't even know how to like It's just it, it's a false equivalent. It's a false equivalence fallacy, I think, is just the way to just put this. Back in 1962, these are the vaccine doses that were administered to children in the United States. So back in 1962, okay. there were just five vaccine doses administered to children for polio. Okay, why are we going back to 19? Wait, 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 hold on. We're going Fast back to 19. To we're going back to 1962 before we got to the moon. What? Why are we going to 1962? I, 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 sorry, I just need a quick, I need a quick, um, rundown as to why we are going back. I mean, I don't think it's necessarily bad to compare time periods. I just want to know why are we going back? I feel like this, we didn't get a setup for this. This hasn't been explained to us. Um, but I think I'm going to add this to my list. Uh, the number of vaccines given... In 1962 versus current vaccine schedules. The number of vax given in 1962 versus current vax schedules. Bracket 12 minutes, 20 seconds. I wrote 2120, that's not good. I need 12. Cool. That'll be a good one. Because I'm listening to somebody who knows what they're talking about, talking about why the vaccine change numbers is going to be good. And I'm sure she's going to go through it, so. Um, actually, I'm just going to be right back. I'm going to put this on for a second. And we will continue momentarily.
ever turned. Turn it down a little bit. Hello, welcome. She's going to say, look at how few Vax types we're being giving out at the time, and then she's gonna be like, oh my god, why are there so many now? Yeah, uh, the Daily Wire has this habit, and, and like, conspiracy theorists in general, tend to have a habit of asking questions that have answers to them, and then pretending like they don't have answers, and being, like, incredulous, incredulous about it. It's very annoying. It's also kind of stupid. But all right, let's let her go. 1983, and you can see and look through this. Now you need more doses of DTP because I suppose it wears off. Now they've added MMR, they have TD, they have OPV. And just to back that up quickly, I'm just going to show you, this is actually from the CDC. This is a chart of those doses that I just showed you that, were, that are supposed to be given to children, okay? Now let's jump to 2018. Now there are 72 doses that children are to receive. There's more today because I believe they've now added COVID. I'm, I, I'm not positive about that. I'm pretty sure if they have added COVID and you need multiple COVID shots, at least they're trying to add COVID as a mandatory vaccine. 70. Who is they? So you said she's not, not sure if they've added COVID, but then is 100% sure that they're trying to add it. Um, on a press... I, I just mean, I, I don't like that, that wishy-washy kind of bullshit. But, whatever. Two doses that are administered to children today. So I'm going to ask a question for those of you um, that are my age, maybe you're a little bit younger. Uh, do you feel that the children today are healthier than we were? I was born what? in 1989. Do you, when you look at the children today, these children that are receiving between 72 and 75 doses of vaccines, do you go, thank goodness for medicine because these children are so healthy? My answer to that is absolutely not. In fact, what... Do you feel like... Children today are more healthy than, I guess, 1962. I think the better question would be, are, do you feel children are more healthy today than in 1946? <laughs> like, I, I don't, like, I don't understand this question. It doesn't really matter how you feel about it. I mean, it matters how you feel about it in the sense of, like, the political sphere and politics and stuff like that. But, like, from an individual conversation standpoint, how you feel about something doesn't necessarily make it true, right? So, the fuck kind of bullshit question is this? It's fear mongering. And more healthy in what way? Because that's an, that seems like a broad term to me. More healthy as in they everybody's got ADHD now? You guys think she's gonna go into like... Kids are getting autism because of vaccines? <laughs> yeah, you guys see, you guys, you guys know. <laughs> All right, let's let her keep going. What I would say is that I have never thought that children were weaker or more pathetic in terms of their allergies. Kids seem to be allergic to everything, things that we what? couldn't even dream up when we were young. I babysat for a young girl. She had an egg allergy. She had a milk allergy and uh -huh. she had a tree nut and a peanut allergy. When I uh -huh. dropped her off to her daycare, tree nuts and peanuts were banned because every, so there were just way too many children that had these allergies. So they just, they banned it entirely. So you what do you want us to do instead? Candace, you want us to just bad allergies. not when ban those things and let kids die from their allergies? Because that's what we used to do before we knew they, they were allergic. Kids are more sick today because we let kids survive things that would have killed them. What? Huh? 
even in her own rhetoric, this doesn't make any sense. Child, I distinctly remember the name of the girl in our school who had a peanut allergy because it was so rare. I, I was like, what a freak, why is she allergic to peanuts? Her name was Kamisha Bias, I'll never forget it. She had to step outside if anybody opened m and &M. Why are you just putting this person's name out there? What the fuck? That's irresponsible to me. You shouldn't just put her name out, just call her something else. If anybody had a birthday party and there were nuts, she was so allergic she had to step outside and it actually serves as a vivid memory um, of me in elementary school and in middle school because it was so odd. Now it's so not odd <laughs> that they're just banning it. They're just saying this is not even a safe thing. We're not even going to run the risk. Why? Why? How, how could that happen? There's also... What? So kids don't die, Candace? It's not that complicated. Why are we protecting children? I mean, gee, I don't know, man. Something, something pro-life, I think. I don't know. Allegedly. What is this actual nonsense? <laughs> what the fuck? Like, is anybody else notice how insane that sounded? Did did that not sound insane to you? <laughs> that, that that what's the word I'm looking for? Unempathetic? Like, not having any idea or empathy for the struggles of other people? Because that's what that sounded like to me. <laughs> oh, boy. And also, yes, sir, you're correct. It's not, it's also just, it, I mean, it's an allegory, it's a personal experience, and it's like, okay, great, but that doesn't really say anything about what's true or not. I'm gonna need to make more tea. So other things today that just registered to me as very odd. Uh, one, one thing way. being that people are just struggling to have children. Uh, there are so many people that have fertility issues. And again, I'm not connecting this dot and saying that this is definitely from vaccines or it's definitely not. But it's something that's weird. You know, our, and our I'm bringing it up in my vaccine 9, 10, video. 11, what the fuck are you talking? Why? Why is this not edited out? <laughs> Quite literally, my grandfather is was one of 12, um, and these people were certainly not getting vaccines. And you look today, and people are struggling to have one child. They're having to turn to IVF. They're having to turn to more science, and they just can't figure out why. And I think huh? that there are tons of things that we should be discussing, and one thing that is unique is this explosion of vaccinations that have been taking place. Explosion. If you're like most Americans, you're struggling to make ends meet. Everything is more expensive these days. By the time you pay the bills, oh look, your you've car got an ad that explains exactly why people are having less kids. Because one, they don't need to because they're not dying of polio because of those vaccines we talked about, and because of how expensive it is to have a child. Thanks, Candace. And go grocery Thanks shopping. for explaining There's it. Nothing left. You You're laying out clown. your credit card for all non-essentials or maybe Ugh. even some essentials. Last I checked, the average credit card interest rate for Americans is sitting at 24%. That yeah, is sure, insane. Whatever. How are you supposed to dig yourself out credit of Credit in America debt? confuses if you me own as a, home, a Canadian. I want you to call my friends at American Financing right now. No. Interest rates have finally dropped into the fives, which is the lowest they've Your been in friend, a long time. Your friend, I'm skipping ahead. Credit card debt. Ad, what a relight not last. One, two hundred. Ad. This is a very ad. long ad. Holy ad. shit. How ad. long is this? Rather. I also want okay, to just attack initially uh, the official narrative, rather, that vaccines make us healthier, right? That is kind of the narrative. You Vaccines what? make us healthier. You should get more and more and more. And every time there's a vaccine that becomes available, you should roll up your sleeve and you should get the shot. Something that you should know is that the United States of every country in the entire world administers the most vaccines, okay? The United States administers the most vaccines. Today? So if you follow that logic... Is that true? And we should find that children in the United States are the healthiest, right? No, because healthy is a broad thing. The only thing you would be able to figure out is whether or not children are getting the, the things that they're getting vaccinated for or not. Uh, I'm going to write that on the timestamp for that one. I think this is a good one for, the, for, for Dr. Dan and Lanya. Let's see here. What was that? If uh, USA has the most vaccines... 
anti-vax, therefore American kids should be the healthiest. And the timestamp of this is 1720. 1720. That's that that doesn't make any sense. No, she's that's just incorrect. That's that's a fallacious line of questioning. That's that's not how that works. Wrong. Incorrect. Be more worried about the garbage American diet and the vaccines, right? I want you to take a look at this chart. This chart, just to explain it to you. It's the OECD chart. The OECD stands for the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development. Um, it's a unique forum where the governments of 37 democracies, this is according to Google, um, with market-based economies collaborate to develop policy standards to promote sustainable economic growth. So the idea is like these are other governments that are just like us that we can compare ourselves to. So when you say that you're making an OECD comparison, it means that you're looking at other countries that have a similar structure to our, that have similar access um, uh, as access to medicine as we would have that are our form of this group. So take a look at this chart of OECD Jesus countries. Jesus Christ, that was a weird and way to explain And what this chart is sure. comparing are infant mortality rates amongst these countries. And you can see when you look at the bottom that for infant mortality rates, the United States ranks number 36 uh -huh. behind countries like Croatia, Latvia, Hungary, Belgium, Austria, Greece, Israel, Korea, yeah. Spain, Czech Republic, Slovenia, Japan, Finland, Norway, Estonia, all countries which use way less vaccines than us. And it tells you at the top that the infant mortality rate is defined as the number of deaths of... And how exactly, Candace, do you intend on equating this to the infant... Equating these infant mortality rates to vaccines and not to something else? Correlation via causation. I bet America has more ice cream trucks now than it did back in back in nineteen sixty. What did, what did it say? Nineteen sixty two. Shitty healthcare, as well as like the economics of the situation, like how much it costs. Um. The uh, the poverty line as well matters a lot in this type of analysis. Like, you'd have to look at the statistics of where in... America is also quite large, by the way. So, like, both, both like, in, like, square footage, but also in population density. And so, if you wanted to analyze the healthcare of Americans you're still going to be, like, there's going to be some areas of America that are going to way drag that that median number down and places that are going to way pull that median number up. So that's a thing as well. But hey, what do I Children know? Children under one year of age expressed per every 1,000 live births. Now, it, what's really interesting about this chart to me is that just so you know, the United States gives the most money to all this bureaucracy. Um, and so they feel the need to qualify this. If you keep <laughs> reading on, it says, um, some of the international variation in infant mortality rates is due to variations among countries in registering practices for premature infants. The United States and Canada are two countries which register a much higher proportion of babies weighing less than 500 grams with low odds of survival, resulting in higher reported infant mortality. I looked into this, and this is absolute BS. I could find only two countries um, where they were weighing the metric in a different way that would have impacted this. So I encourage you. But to you're look not going to show that. Why wouldn't you show that? Doesn't that seem really relevant to the video you're making? Why aren't you, if you think that it's a bullshit and the numbers you're presenting are bad, why wouldn't you explain and show how and why the numbers are bad? You're, you're, why do I gotta do the work for you? Where, why aren't you just showing me this? Uh, uh, okay, so I have to now look up what was it? What did she say? Hold on, I have to go back. What did she say? Definition of Im infant mortality rates. The infant mortality rate is defined as the number of deaths of children under one year of age expressed per 1,000 live births. 
Some of the international variations in infant mortality rates is due to variations among countries in registering practices for premature infants. The United States and Canada are two countries which register a much higher proportion of babies weighing less than 500 grams with low odds of survival, resulting in a higher reported infant mortality rate. In Europe, several countries apply a minimum gestational age of 22 weeks or a birth weight threshold of 500 grams for babies to be registered as live births. This indicator is measured in terms of deaths per 1,000 live births. Okay, so the metric she's talking about is Canada and the United States, for example, will register children that would not necessarily be registered in other countries because they don't match that 22-week period. So, for example, for an example, right? Not like this is literally the case. I'm just using the example that's being provided. So, in America, a, a baby being born will be registered if they were born before 22 weeks and below 500 grams. And that, and that different countries measure things differently is going to skew the data slightly. So just be aware of that, that, that skew, right? Duh. I mean, that makes sense. I don't know how this is bullshit, though. If she wants to say that, like, how is it bullshit? That makes, this, what, what about it is bullshit again? Grams with low odds of survival resulting in higher reported infant mortality. I looked into this and this is absolute BS. I could find only two countries um, where they were weighing the metric in a different way that would have impacted this. So I encourage you to look even deeper into this, but the, the idea that they even need to qualify this um, signals to me that they don't want people looking deeper into this. They're like, oh, it is kind of weird. The United States is not number one here, but don't, don't pay attention to this because the United States is kind of controlling the OECD data and we want you to know that. It's what are you talking about? What, you're, are you saying that the America is skewing the OECD data on purpose because they pay the most money into it, allegedly? And on top of that, they're also like, they acknowledge this thing and tell you that it's a thing and and that's them hiding it she is supposedly looking at the oecd data Ooh. what it's not a big deal that our infants are registering 36 behind all of these countries. So I, I'm going to put all this information up, guys. I want you to be able to access it and to assess it yourself. And you can go through each and every one of these countries and determine how they register live births. Something that Big Pharma is banking on you not having the time to do. Make the time. It is No, you do it. You brought it up. You're making me do it. Why are you making me do it now? Where is this? Binge all tens. No, grab some. Yes, we canned it. Wow. <laughs> Sources, CDC, ingredients, drinking alcohol, immunization scheduled, 1983 immunization scheduled, CDC cervical cancer, st bills, cancer statistics, infant mortality rates. Which, is it this one? This is 2021. So I can look at how... documents i'm trying to find where she's definition okay i can highlight the countries and i can make it yearly and quarterly and shit latest available data oh sorry that's too much for me to understand um where in this does it say how their different countries are measuring. How's it for citations? Data warehouse, maybe? Health data, data warehouse? Cite this data set. No, this doesn't, nope. 
Okay, well, she did not provide what she said she was going to provide. So I do not know what the fuck I'm supposed to fucking get from this. And if they eat... Huh. Infant mortality rate is defined as a blah 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 blah. Yeah, okay, yes, that makes sense. Is this... Is this... Th this doesn't have that information. What the fuck? Okay, maybe there's... Parker baby died. Coronavirus. State of polio. Factors... She didn't cite the thing that she said she was gonna cite. Simple as that. It's not... I would have to go through each... Or, like, a handful of countries and look at how they met... And, like, just... I don't know. Do a cross-reference with a Google search and hopefully I can find a reasonable source through Google that says how X country defines... Um, mortal infant mortality, or or how how each country or quote unquote selected country um, registers um, newborns or registers infants. <clears throat> I, I think I think that's what I'm being told. She didn't provide that information, she just talked about it. Which would you'd think would be the, the thing that she would want to show, but it's not. I can't imagine why. <laughs> it's lazy. Yeah, well, it's lazy in a video that should probably have that information in it, but... It is, it is very telling that America is ranked so lowly in terms of health and in terms of infant mortality. It All is right, telling. So I wanna jump into my personal story. I call this my personal shot in the dark because it is what has set me on this path. And it is something that when it happened to me, it was why God, why? And now I see it is because I've been given this platform uh, to share the story and to inspire a lot of women to share their stories. I've actually never seen more women respond than when I talk about the Gardasil shot, uh, which is one of the vaccines that was administered to me when I was about 19 or 20 years old and the vaccine that I was injured from. This was my big wake up call. So I'll give you the background story. Again, I was 19 or 20 years old when there suddenly was this really big push for women to get the Gardasil vaccine, which was a three part series. And I'm going to show you an old commercial from that time because the message that was being delivered was that if you wanted to avoid getting cancer, you would get this vaccine. Like one way that you could mark yourself safe from cervical cancer was to get the Gardasil vaccine. Here well, is I mean, you're never going to be safe from, from any vaccine. cancer, really, but you can lower your Each risks. Each year in the U.S., thousands of women learn they have cervical cancer. I could be one less. Uh-huh. One less statistic. One less. Because now there's Gardasil, the only vaccine that may help protect you from the four types of human papillomavirus that may cause 70% of cervical cancer. So I saw these commercials, obviously, like every other young woman, and I fully trusted my doctors, just like every other young woman. And I went to my gynecologist and for my annual exam, and he said, there's a new vaccine and you absolutely have to get it. And I said, what is it? He said, Gardasil, this is, it's good. It's, it's gonna prevent uh, you from getting cancer down the line. Now that I'm older, what a strange thing. We don't have a cure to cancer. Why would I believe that we have something that can just fully, pro a shot that could prevent you from getting cancer? Uh yeah, it doesn't fully do anything, Candace. <laughs> I like how you accidentally caught yourself there. Um, so I guess we add to the, the questions list. Um, vaccines that can prevent cancer. I.e. Gardasil. I don't know if I per like spelled that right, but who cares? Uh, now it presents so many red flags. Yeah, her annual OBGYN appointment. Yeah, yeah. Remember, she she was young and didn't come from money, and got annual Pap smears. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It's hard for me. Like, I don't know. I guess. I mean, it's if you're being 
very sexually active with many different partners or like even two to three different partners you should always get yourself checked out you should always get yourselves checked out when you can It's about the time I was young and I was dumb. And just so you guys know, the Gardasil shot was approved back in 2006. So again, I think I was about 19 years old when this happened. So anyways, I went, I rolled up my sleeve to get the first uh, shot. And immediately after he administered it, I hit the ground and I passed out, which I never pass out. I am not a person that faints. I am not a person that is queasy. So this was very out of that is the, meaningless. The, out of the norm for me <laughs> personally. Statement. When it came to uh, what he essentially said to me was, "Did you did you eat breakfast this morning?" And I said, well, "No, I didn't eat breakfast." He said, "Well, that's why you passed out. It's okay. Uh, you know, not a big deal. But you should make sure before you get the second shot that you eat breakfast." So I was a little spooked. Um, you know, they sat me down, gave me some water. I left thereafter, but he had given me what I assumed was a valid reason for this happening. I obviously hadn't eaten breakfast that morning. Went back to get my second shot and made sure that I ate breakfast that morning. And when I sat down, I just thought there was no plausibility that I was going to pass out. The nurse came in, she gave me the injection, and this time my reaction was much more severe. Um, not only did I pass out, and I remember this moment especially horrifically because she had asked me to uh, disrobe because afterwards I was going to have an exam. So I was essentially just wearing a shirt and one of those little pieces of paper, uh, you know, to cover your parts. And I had passed out, fallen off of the chair uh, or the, the table rather that I was on. And when I came to, I began having what can only be described as a mini seizure. I began shaking and, and I began vomiting profusely. Um, the I question your memory around a seizure um when people say that they remember something vividly or very clearly and then they describe something like a seizure that can and like a like passing out when they describe stuff like that and they try to be very specific about that i like what happened beforehand or around that time i tend to be a little bit suspicious about how honest you're being or not necessarily how honest you're being about how much you can actually possibly remember because this is all kind of stuff that can affect your brain and affect your memory very distinctly. So that to me is like a little bit of like a, I mean, I, I believe you that something happened, but how good you're... I get suspicious when somebody says I don't re If somebody says I don't remember it very well because I passed out, then I'm... That's not a red flag to me. But if somebody says, I remember this incredibly vividly and then describes a point in time where they were, they had fainted, they can't possibly remember that they were unconscious. So I'm a little bit suspect about what you're trying to tell me. But sure. She only opens her body language when she's talking about the robe, but then elbows and arms come back and close to the body for the rest of her story. Red flag. Yeah, the body language is... I'm only tertiary. I like that you're watching that because I'm only tertiary tertiarily watching that because I'm drawing and just listening, but yeah, the, the her body language is questionable. Two gynecologists came flying down the hallway. I had the nurse in there. They were all over me trying to take care of me, and I just even... As I'm recapping this to you, I just remember how absolutely traumatized and scared I was not knowing what was happening to my body, not knowing why I was vomiting, not knowing why I was shaking. I've never had these things happen to me ever before in my life. Um, and it was very obvious that my gynecologist- You never- you got all the way to 19 and you've never puked and shook in your entire life? I don't believe you. When you vomit, getting the shakes is- like, along with it is common. Like, if you, I don't know, drink too much and you get, like, puke, you'll get, like, your body will get some tremblies pretty easily. Your body can get the tremblies very easily, like, if you're, even if you just have, like, the flu. Like, it's not, it's not even that weird. I'm not saying that she shouldn't be scared or freaked out or whatever. That's, that's fine. But I, I have a hard time believing a 19-year-old has never vomited in their entire life. That's, <laughs> I'm sorry I that I don't really have like that seems that seems unreasonable to me that seems like a 
It sounds like bullshit. You're trying to focus in to understand how what she's saying makes any sense. Yeah, I don't- I'm- I- again, I don't- I, I hate to be that guy, except I don't, but I don't believe that a 19-year-old has never vomited in their whole life. I don't- like, I just don't believe that. It's like when somebody's like, oh, I've never been sick in my entire life. I should've- I've never been sick literally ever. Like, I don't believe you. That's that's just a bullshit. You're t I don't know why you're lying about that, but okay. <laughs> just because you refuse to acknowledge that you were sick doesn't mean you were never sick. Uh, we're spooked. And when they got me up and got me into the chair, and you can imagine how mortifying this is, this happened to have been two male gynecologists that ran uh, this particular firm, and I'm completely naked having a seizure. I mean, from the bottom down, completely naked having a seizure. And he said to me right away that you should discontinue this series. You should not get the third one. This is a reaction um, that you should not be having to this. Uh, and it, I remember just crying hysterically. I was just so scared, you know? I, it, it, when something happens to you medically that's never happened to you medically, it, it's like an out-of-body experience. And I was traumatized leaving the office. They obviously waited until I was good enough, gave me water, sat me down for a long time, kept asking me if I was okay. I said I was fine and I left. The residual, uh, I, I guess the, the residual drama that took place, I, I, I didn't feel like myself for years after getting that second installment of the Gardasil shot. What? Uh, I had a fatigue that I can't even describe to you that lasted for years. I felt like my brain didn't work the same since getting that vaccine. I know that I have shared the story before and so many women have written into me. This, this really seems to be the one vaccine that so many women have had. Hold on. Hold on. She didn't... She, how old is Candace Owens now? When did Candace Owens um, like career start? Candace Owens... Hold on. I'm, I'm going to go to her Wikipedia page real quick. There you go. All right. Candace Owens. Candace Amber Owens Farmer. April 29th, 1989. Um, served as communications director for the conservative advocacy group Turning Point USA between 2017 and 2019. Okay. No, I'm looking for before that. Raised by her grandparents after family divorce, third of four children. In 2007, while a 17 year old senior in high school, didn't she say she was 19 in 2006? In this story? Am I wrong? Am I misremembering? No, she's not explaining how the doctor made the connection between X or Y or Z or whatever. What test did they do? Yeah. So, hold on, I'm gonna- I'm gonna set this back a little bit, because I want to hear when she said Blah 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 I wanted to say here we go story and to inspire a lot of women to share their stories. I've actually never seen more women respond than when I talk about the Gardasil shot, uh, which is one of the vaccines that was administered to me when I was about 19 or 20 years old and the vaccine that I was injured from. This was my big wake up call. So I'll give you the background story. Again, I was 19 or 20 years old. And why did she say growing up? She said earlier that growing up, it, she thought that if people didn't vaccinate their kids, they were trying to kill their kids. But this happened to her when she was 19 or 20 and it changed her mind. Who the fuck was asking you at 15 about vaccinations? 
in 2000s. I don't, like, there's so many things in this that don't, they just don't, like, no, that's not real. <laughs> that's not real. No, uh, she's a, uh, Candace Owens is a year older than me, so she might be 34 now, she'll be 35 this year. I was born in 1990. So, around when she was 19 or 20 years old, when there suddenly was this really big push for women to get the Gardaso vaccine, which was a three-part series. And I'm going to show you an old <laughs> commercial from that time because the message that was being delivered was that if you wanted to avoid getting cancer, yeah, yeah, yeah. was... Each year in the U.S., thousands of women learn they have cervical cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All types yeah. of human papillomavirus that may cause... Women, and I fully trusted my doctors, just like every other young Did woman. Did she not say that this was like in 2006? And for my annual exam, and he said there's a new vaccine. And you have annual have exam. And Once said, a year. What is it? He said Gardasil. This is, it's good. It's, it's going to prevent uh, you from getting cancer down the line. Now that I'm older, what a strange thing. We don't have a cure to cancer. Why would I believe that we have something... There's just... Okay, in 2007, well, a 17-year-old senior in high school, Owens received three racist death threat voicemail messages totaling two minutes from a group of white male classmates, which included the son of the then mayor and future Democratic governor Daniel Malloy, Joshua Starr. The city's superintendent of schools listened to the voicemail message and said they were horrendous. Owens' family sued the Board of Education in federal court alleging that the city did not protect her rights, resulting in a 35,500 settlement in January of 2008. Owens pursued an undergraduate degree in journalism in Rhode Island, dropped out of her junior year because of an issue with her student loan. Afterwards, she worked as an intern for Vogue magazine in New York in 2012. Owens took a job as the administrative assistant for a private equity firm in Manhattan, later moving up to become its vice president of administration. Socialautopsy.com in 2016, a website she said would expose bullies on the internet by tracking their digital footprint. The site would have uh, solicited users to take screenshots of offensive posts and send them to the website where they could be categorized by the user's name. She used crowdfunding on Kickstarter for the website. The proposal was immediately controversial, drawing criticisms that Owens was de um, animizing the uh, web um, for the website. No, no, no. The uh, anonymizing, doxing internet users and violating their privacy. According to Daily Dot, people from all sides of the anti harassment debate were quick to criticize the database, calling it a public shaming list that would encourage doxing and retaliatory harassment. Dem the website. Trump identity politics shit blah 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 shit I yeah this this little bit right here is April 29th so she yeah, she is this month and a She'll be twenty. Uh, she'll be thirty-five. Um. Sixteen. Okay. All right. Sure. All right. Moving on. I'm just gonna jump his head. That you eat breakfast. The chair. Your shot. Uh, I had a fatigue that I can't even describe to you that lasted for years. I felt like my brain didn't work the same since getting that vaccine. I know that I have shared the story before and so many women have written into me. This, this really seems to be the one vaccine that so many women have had reaction to. It's stunning to me that it's still on the market. I've had people say that they were very shortly thereafter diagnosed with type one diabetes, all sorts of stories. You'll obviously see them in the comments today of people that were similarly impacted by this vaccine, people that similarly had seizures after getting this vaccine and now this vaccine comes with some very severe warnings if you, can you imagine have di undiagnosed diabetes and you get a vaccination yeah that's an underlying issue that you would want to know about before you get a vaccine 
that's not the vaccine causing it. That's the vaccine letting you know that that's a thing that's happening. Especially if it's like, did do you have has does Candace talk about what issue underlying issue this vaccine showed up or why she passed out because of this vaccine or just because that she did pass out because of this vaccine? I like that. What the fuck? Yeah, also, her vax injury story involved a doc. What was her injury, by the way? Vax injury story involved a doctor caring about her and saying that she shouldn't continue the treatment yet, but but yet for her thing to be true, she would have to have the doctor want her to continue anyway. Yeah, right. Like for her conspiracy theory, yes. Me um, going through this process uh, really alone and uh, crying as I was sitting in my car about to drive home and asking myself, what did I just put into my body? Actually, what? a more to the point question was why did I just put this into my body? I don't even know what it was that I just put into my body and I don't know why I put it into my body. Why would I just blanket trust a doctor? I passed out the first time. That should have been the first, hello Candace, maybe not for you. And now I've had what amounts to a full, a, a mini seizure in an office. And I'm sitting here and I realize I don't know what is, was even put into my body. I don't even know what it was that I was reacting to. And then I began to conduct some research and what I discovered. Conduct some you, research. Is going to astonish you as well. So as Define I- Define research. <laughs> yes, I will pause exploratory minds. What would you like, good sir? Yeah, I'll wait. Full mini seizure, yeah. <laughs> she was gonna have she was gonna say a full on seizure and then tweaked what she was saying. I said um, the Gardasil vaccine was approved back in 2006. So what I want you to pay attention to is 2005, right? What oh, it was this approved moment of in 2006. I, I see. Okay, okay. Push That's where my numbers got confused. Fearful to get this vaccine. And what better way to make people fearful than to use the word cancer? Cancer what? is something that terrifies us all. We all think about cancer. We see commercials with people that have cancer. We know people that have suffered from cancer and we know how horrific cancer is. And if you use a term, if you use a phrase like this is going to prevent you from getting cancer, you are obviously going. But that's not what the commercial said. The commercial said this may prevent this specific thing that can cause cancer. There's a whole lot of mays and cans and ifs in that commercial. Apparently you just didn't listen. Going to inspire people to act out out of fear. So I, I want to take a look for you. I want you guys to, to take a look rather with me at what the cervical cancer rates were in 2005 in the United States before they rolled out the Gardasil exam. So first and foremost, it's important to note that the female population in the United States in 2005 was 149.9 million, okay? That's an approximate 149.9 million females that were living in the United States. Of the 149.9 million females in the United States, there were just 10,370 cases of cervical cancer, okay, before the rollout of Gardasil. So I've done the math for you. You can fact check this math for you. Hold on, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna read this. Okay, estimated new cases, both sexes, male, female. So the male is blank. 10, 10,370. And estimated deaths for females was 3,710. The number, the number of deaths is going to be, I, I suspect it's going to be relevant here. For the rollout of Gardasil. So I've done the math for you. You can fact check this math yes. for you. That means that if you were a female living in the United States in 2005, you had just a 0.0069% chance of being diagnosed with cervical cancer 
before they rolled out this preventative vaccine. So you are seeing, by the way. Okay, but how many people is that? How many people is 0 0.006, whatever the fuck you said? This is the problem with statistics. It's very easy to manipulate them to make them sound one way or another. It's very, very easy to make some small number sound like a big number, a big number sound like a small number. It ain't that deep. It's not that hard to do. But her problem seems to be... Her problem seems to be um, with the marketing, not with the actual results so far, which is kind of funny. No, 10K, no, 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 so, okay, math, math being math, okay, so, if you have, zero point, zero point nine, no, hold on, sorry, zero point, get out of here, zero point zero, hold on, let me do this on another layer before I screw myself up. 0.0069%, right? In 2005. 2005. Right? And then we have 10,000... A total of 10,300... 70 cases of which 3,710 people died. Right? And then the estimated total number of women is not shown here. Right? So we need to know how many women were in America. My brain cannot do math. Like this, please. I beg of you. Who's pinging me? What do you want? Somebody's pinging me on Discord. No, I don't work. Sir? Okay, 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 who cares? I give up. Before the rollout of Gardasil. So I've done sure. the math for you. You can fact check this math for you. I that can't. means that if you I'm were a stupid. female living in the United States in 2005, you had just a 0.0069% chance of being diagnosed with cervical cancer before they rolled out this preventative vaccine. So you are seeing, by the way, a chart that we are sharing. This chart can be found on the American Cancer Society's website. Again, we are not gonna use any shady sources for the amount of cases of cervical cancer from 2005 before they ever rolled out this vaccine. I like that she admits that other sources like this are shady. That's kind of a weird thing to is it just me or is that a weird thing to straight up admit to out the gate to be like, hey, listen, we, we believe in all these conspiracies, but we're not going to use any shady stuff that actually like. <laughs> Millions. Millions. Now. They've essentially decided, Big Pharma all by itself, that this vaccine is so successful that they have now they? not just said it's for women, it's now for men. So if you're watching this now, you're like, what are you talking about, cancer? What do you mean just for women and cervical cancer? Men are getting this vaccine too. Yeah, eventually they decided to extend it to man, which, men, which was confusing to me because, again, that big push, which you just saw in the commercial, was all about women preventing themselves from cervical cancer. So how did they magically realize this formula was also going to help men if a man does not have a cervix. It's very confusing to me, it doesn't matter. I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor. So just trust them. So what they say to men is- No, it's your, it's your don't know what you're talking about. You're asking these questions like, what? What? Ma yeah, magically, they just magically figure it out. How did, how, how did they, magically figure out that Gardasil could do something for men? Question mark. 
Yeah, well, what is it supposed to do for men? What is, like, the... I don't know, why does drinking Buckley's work for men and women? We're different creatures, didn't you know? Is that this could prevent you from getting penile cancer, which is just not even on the map of cancers that men can get. I mean, I, I will get into that later, but just know that they have now extended what? this to men, so that must mean that it... Penile cancer? Quote, penile cancer? Question mark, end quote. This is at 29... It was such a astounding success for the female population that they said, men, you should get this as well. So let's fact check how successful the Gardasil shot was for females. So these numbers are from, from 2022. In 2022, there were 167.5 million females living in the United States. Okay. Of the 167.5 million females living in the United States, there were 14,100 cases of cervical cancer. Now, the math on that means that if you were in a female in the United States, and this is after almost 20 years um, of having, almost two decades of having this wonderful vaccine to prevent from cervical cancer, your chances- Nope. Nope. I'm going to stop you right there. What's the vaccine? What's the inoculation rate? You have to know the inoculation rate. If you don't know the inoculation rate, it's not going to help you. You have to know how many people are actually getting the vaccine for it to be fucking effective. If you don't know the inoculation rate, you can't draw that conclusion. But keep going, I guess. ...of getting cervical cancer today are 0.0084%. That's weird because that means that is it adjusted cervical for cancer inflation? rates have gone slightly up in the United States since the rollout of the Gardasil vaccine. How does that make sense? What's the inoculation rate? By what rate metric is? are they determining that this Gardasil vaccine, which has injured so many women, myself included, should not be... Actually, you didn't show a single number of how many women were injured by the Gardasil vaccine. You're just stating that there were. You didn't show that either, actually. So, yup. Actually, interestingly enough, you gave us information to the opposite, uh, the um, to the contrary. That the reason the other person that you talked about that was injured, that was which you haven't defined vaccine injured yet, by the way, but the other woman that you talked about said that they got diabetes. They had diabetes and got the inoculation, and it caused problems. So. That wouldn't be the vaccine injuring them. That would be the diabetes injuring them due to the vaccine, like the unknown underlying pre-existing condition. So... <laughs> I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you haven't actually demonstrated that this vaccine is harming anybody. You didn't even explain how the doctor that the doctor even came to the conclusion that the vaccine was causing like was causing you any harm just that he said that you should discontinue using it like you shouldn't finish the you shouldn't finish the dosages you you're you didn't say that your doctor said that the vaccine caused you any problems Look, even us who don't know much about vac shit can debunk these problems just by thinking about what she said. This is like the, the value in having different conversations with different people. Having Dr. Dan and Manya on, I what I hope to have is the conversation about what the vaccines actually do and what you can expect when it comes to like underlying conditions or what a vaccine injury actually is and what those numbers look like and what they mean versus what i'm usually pretty good at which is but what did you actually say though that doesn't make any sense 
very silly. It's continued and rather should be extended to the entire male population. If you think that's shady that they've extended it to the male population because now they've decided that they can help with penile cancer and all sorts of cancers. Why would that be shady? You didn't, you're going to find you didn't demonstrate that part. That they're now mandating a shot, the HPV shot. They are mandating it in Rhode Island, in D.C., in Puerto Rico, in Virginia. Uh, for And then, by the way, just in D.C. and Virginia, it's for girls only. And parents can only opt out if they have a religious or moral belief against it. But in New York, this is where it gets absolutely insane. They attempted to pass a bill in 2019 to require that all children have to have the guard. America should be scared of Canada and all of our vaccine rules and what we have to have for certain things. Um, okay, uh, Vax, um, I don't, I don't know about how to, you know what, never mind, I don't really have a good way to word that question. What is still vaccine to enter any school, including daycare? Uh -huh. To say that that infuriates me would be the greatest understatement because of how I suffered that vaccine. When you are injured from a vaccine and then you learn that they are trying to give this vaccine to toddlers. Your experience isn't everyone's experience. If your experience was everyone's experience, your numbers would look a lot different, Candace. She's not talking about world rates. She started with talking about world rates and then immediately moved away from that. America doesn't like to talk about what other countries do and whether or not it's effective. It, it is a kind of evil that I can't even put into words. Oh, now it's when evil. I, know I thought you said you friends, weren't going to try to scare have... people, but you're using seizures to try to scare people. You're using spooky language to try to scare people. You're using metrics that you aren't explaining or properly addressing. You're leaving information out. You're lying to people to get a rise out of them for money. You're doing the conspiracy thing that you're saying that other people and doctors are doing. You said that the doctors treated you well and told you to stop taking this thing because of these concerns. Because you had an, a reaction that they didn't understand. But then you didn't explain to us what the doctor conclude what the doctor's conclusion actually was and what tests came forward. You said that there's been this increase, but you didn't talk about how what the rollout rate for the inoculation was in within that year. Now you're talking about how they're forcing this onto toddlers when it was a bad traumatic thing that happened to you. That's all inflammatory language, that thing that you said you didn't like at the beginning. You, like, you, you criticized it for saying, like, oh, they used the word cancer to scare people. You're doing the thing, Candace. It's you. I had a bad reaction to Gardasil. Some people didn't. My sister didn't, by the way, as one example. You literally but to think that they would. You with... literally know that your, so your sister didn't have a bad reaction, but you don't want people to be safe because you had a bad reaction one time and your experience equates to everybody except your sister? What the fuck are you talking about? Thank you for just immediately undermining everything you just said. With, again, no metric of success that they can point to demand that children get this vaccine drives me insane it, it drives you me haven't along. talked about that now, though. let's also be you haven't talked about what those metrics would look like or what you would expect to see you didn't even talk about what it was supposed to be used for for men you haven't talked about what the metrics look like for children when the garter cell vaccine was added you had you didn't talk about that at all this is this whole video is a fucking bait and switch <laughs> clear that it doesn't say that this is going to to prevent all cervical cancers they're talking specifically about hpv right, right? hpv is an uh -huh. std that they claim can lead to cervical cancer uh -huh. right and this vaccine is a vaccine against hpv a uh -huh. sexually transmitted disease so i'm going to ask you to explain to me why people why why children in daycare would be taking a vaccine against HPV, which is a sexually transmitted disease. Okay, cool. I think that's a that's a question. We can take that question. Why are children getting Gardasil? 
um, why, um, why are people getting the Gardasil? I've spelt it differently every single time I've typed it. Vax in uh, when they enter school if it's for a sexually trans... Oh, I just got an STD. If it's for an STD. Is that, is that a fair way to word the question, do you guys think? Do you think that's a fair way to word the question she's asking? And the timestamp on this is 3237. Let's just go 30 minutes. That's close enough. Oh, excuse me. I doubt it's been happening too. I'm just trying to make sure I word her question well. What are they what are they concerned about with HPV? You want to know something else about HPV? According to the CDC's website, for HPV, the sexually transmitted disease, which I had never heard of until they suddenly wanted me to take the guard. Guys, guard, so you, know, you do notice she's using uh, charged language to try and scare people right now, right? Like, that's why she's using it. She's, like, implying kids and sex together when that's not what's happening. School, at the time that I was in school, um, until the guard was shot, then we all started hearing about it. Well, for 90% of individuals, HPV clears up without any treatment at all. A miraculous STD it doesn't even you don't even need to treat it. Ninety percent of the time, it clears up all on its own. But it doesn't matter because they now want children who I would hope are not. Oh, okay, so I guess I have to add in what is HPV. Sexually active to get this. I feel like she doesn't understand what HPV is. What? No, that's not. Tr you they can't. You can't blame me for Candace Owens. You can't tell. You can't tell me you've never heard of this woman before me. That's not fair. There's vaccine, no way she's all which over the is place. Potentially going to prevent them from getting sorts of cancers that have actually increased by rates in this country since the rollout of this vaccine. Again, I don't think you showed does that. Any okay. of that makes sense to you? What sort of politicians would put up a bill trying to require all children to have this vaccine to enter school? What? Who is in their pockets would be the right question. Who is lobbying for this? I think the answer is going to be Big Pharma because what is clear to me is that this wasn't about health. If this was about health and this was about determining the success of a product that was on the market, Gardasil would be revoked. But nope, Why? It's not. Instead, you what, will come wait, people why would it be recommend. revoked? You didn't demonstrate that. You didn't talk about that at all. You said it's a story about your experience. You didn't explain anything about why it would be revoked. What? No, nothing even close to that got said. You haven't come close to demonstrating that this should be this should be like taken away. <laughs> this is the flu the flu goes away on its own it doesn't mean that you shouldn't get a flu shot, right? She seems to fail to understand this vaccine does not attack the cancer. It attacks the virus that it is a potential cause of cancer. Yeah. Yes. And that your children get it. All right, so what is... It's not even recommend. It's a re You said that it was a requirement. Now you've changed it to re your people are being recommended to have it. Make up your mind, Candace. Are people being required to have it? Or are people recommending that you get it? Those are different things. Those are different things. Ba -da 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 -da. Candace is embarrassing. I don't know why anybody would listen to this woman. Like, if I can fucking debunk it, I feel like maybe you shouldn't be listening to her. <laughs> Pharma, because you're going to hear me say that a lot, and I want to make sure that you are clear in your understanding of what I'm talking about. I'm talking about wow. a crime syndicate 
I am talking about the- You're talking about a crime syndicate. When you're talking about Big Pharma, she, she's gonna define Big Pharma, but she didn't want to define Vax injury. Okay. She didn't want to define what gar- like, the list of what Gardasil actually is or was or actually in. Dr. Dan is reaching down super low to debunk this guy. That's that's why I'm watching it first, so I can make sure that, that he doesn't have to do all of the- he doesn't have to get into the dirty, dirty work as much. So she's gonna define Big Pharma as a crime syndicate. The likes of El Chapo and Pablo Escobar, we sort of watched these fantastical depictions what? of all that they did, um, which was horrible. And terrific, and but terrific? we watch it and we go, oh my gosh, what? it's so crazy to think Mexico and Colombia on the drug cartel, and that Pablo Escobar got so much power that he was electing people in office, that they rigged uh, certain elections, that El Chapo became so powerful that he was able to, that they had politicians in their pockets. We watch this stuff as if it's a fantasy uh, that's so far away. This could never happen in the United States of America. The problem is it already is happening in the United States of America. What I want to make clear to you and what I think will become clear with you to you over time <laughs> is that what oh they boy. dreamed of America accomplished. Uh, what they dreamed of was a marriage between... Uh, you didn't define it, Candace. You said you were going to define Big Pharma and then you just went on like a fucking LARP. What are you talking about? There are problems in the pharmaceutical industry, yes, but this isn't what you're- <laughs> Ah, bro, brother. <laughs> I don't- I don't know how to- I don't know. <laughs> what does the show Narcos have to do with the Vax Tell Elmo? Yeah, no, she literally just went to, she's like, oh, we think it's a fantasy. Well, you just gave a fantasy as an example. What do you want people to do with that information? The drug cartels, the drug criminals, and the government, right, in lockstep. Could you imagine if rather than having to hide his cocaine, he could have said, well, let's put it in medicine and sell it. <laughs> let's just sell it to people. They did. And say that it's, it's healthy for them. What do you uh, mean? There used to be cocaine and, like, morphine, like, high levels of morphine and shit in, like, regular day-to-day -day medicine. Coca-Cola used to have cocaine in it, Candace. What the fuck are you talking about? I, I'm gonna go get some more tea. I <laughs> Can you imagine what they would do? Oh, no. You know Al Capone got caught on tax fraud, right? Like, he didn't get caught on other shit. <laughs> he got caught on tax fraud. <laughs> Candace has never opened a history book in her entire life. Just like how she never vomited in her entire life. Until that vaccine when she was 19. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put on some, some rad tunes. And I'm gonna go get some tea. I'll be back in like two minutes, or however long it takes the te the the tea kettle to boil.
This music is 100% what my brain is doing right now. Last couple of days. Doop, 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 doop. Doop, 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 doop. Derp, derp, doop, doop. Unga bunga. I let Puck out while I was getting tea. I'm also doing some scheduling with Fuzz Rana and uh, Trolley Dave. And so we're gonna have two philosopher type people, a theologist and a philosopher, I guess, coming on to talk on Debate Hub in a month or two about uh, free will. That'll be fun. Oh. Thank you, I am stretching. Uh. Oh, fuck. What a, what a, what a way to, what a way to be. I don't know why I'm painting this so much in black and white, except that I do have something I want to try and do when I'm done. And I want a black and white version to futz around with. But. I'm being, I feel like I'm being too pedantic in my painting. Alright, let's, let's keep going. I did save. Thank you very much. I'll Actually, save again, though. let's put it in the form of an injection and tell people that they need this or else their children are going to be able to die. That was, they're that's the dream going to be able to die in Mexico. And that is the reality that we have in America today. And but I want that doesn't to talk define about some of the power that they have. They you have were supposed to be defining big pharma. That's not what you did. Power <sighs> via their money. They have power via their influence. They have an entire network of fact checkers. I think if you did not realize how powerful Big Pharma was, you must be aware of it now today after COVID uh, in, in regards to the mass censorship that we saw that we were not able to freely communicate with one another because they had decided uh, that this vaccine was going to save your life. They oh have now God. since walked back a lot of their claims about the vaccine. <laughs> But if you had said those things at first, if you had said, I don't think it's going true. to prevent people from being able to transmit the virus, once upon a time, you would have had your accounts locked and taken down. Now they admit that. Now they say, well, you can get the vaccine and you can still uh, spread COVID and you can still get COVID. But once upon a time, they said that you weren't allowed to say that. Who's That's a scary they? thing that people could be telling the truth and being penalized for that. And I've never seen that happen ever in this country until what? the time of COVID. Um, I want what you to know are you talking problem. about? Half the time the, the Daily Wire existed, they were bitching about being canceled for telling the truth. So now, like, none of that was real, but now it is? What are you doing? Big Pharma is the TV show na Narcos, yeah. I guess so, apparently. Allegedly. Pharma does control politicians, and we are going to eventually get into the lobbying, uh, that there are more pharmaceutical lobbyists in Washington, D.C. than you have congressional representatives. That is insane, right? They have an unbelievable budget. They have an unbelievable uh, amount of money and influence in D.C. That's a real conspiracy. There, like, there are actively, like... If you if the Daily Wire wanted to like expose some really bad like con bit like money conspiracies inside of politics, I think that would be great. They should do more of that. They should just do a whole series of, of like the first episode is what who's in the government's pocket, like who's 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 in there, and then like do a mini series on like Nestle and like. PepsiCo and like big pharma and then like actually lay out like how many employees do they have dedicated to that how much resource and money goes into that and then like divvy it up into like which which uh, companies are the big ones but that would take real journalism and I don't think they're capable of real journalism let's let's maybe I'm being pessimistic and we, we are going to get into just how influential they can be, what it takes to even get a shot on the schedule. Not much, <laughs> to just a little bit of, or a lot of bit of money, rather. And we're also going to talk about the it's financial not much, but it's a lot for doctors to keep kids on vaccine schedules. One such story, obviously, I made a decision not to vaccinate my child, and I will never forget. You! You were, you stopped, they, all it took was you having a seizure for them to be like, maybe don't take this. You were 19 in America that's not an adult. 
you, you already gave us an example of, of doctors not doing the thing you claim that they're doing and that it's not hard to not get a vaccine. You already explained that there were also still exceptions for these vaccines. <laughs> a joke. I was living in Washington, D.C. when my son was born and we went to this wonderful pediatrician and we basically sat uh -huh. down with her and had a meeting while I was nine months pregnant. And I said, you know, I don't I don't think I want to vaccinate my child at the time. I said maybe we will delay it, but we definitely won't be keeping him on the schedule. And she said, you know, if you don't keep him on the schedule, then we can't have him here. Okay. And I sort of pressed her on that. I said, what do you mean we can't have it? She said, well, we can't have unvaccinated children in the building. And I said, well, that's weird because aren't all the children unvaccinated? No. <laughs> Until you vaccinate them? So that's once the child is you're born, right you're happy to have them here when they're not vaccinated. You don't consider them vaccinated the entire schedule until after maybe the first two years before there's a break. So Your you issue is a weird semantic. My... That's it? That's all you got? Really? Okay. My child was not vaccinated, was sitting in the lobby versus a child that was going to be vaccinated that was sitting in the lobby. And she couldn't answer the question. And then I realized and I discovered stupid. that these pediatricians are receiving kickbacks from the insurance if they keep a child on the vaccine. What are you talking about? I thought you said, aren't, isn't this the same group of people that's like, if a, if a company, a private company wants to do whatever they want, they're allowed to do that? Isn't that what you decided? Are we against that now? Did we change our minds? Is that... I think kickbacks about about medications is a reasonable question because that's a thing that happens, um, particularly in America, more often than Canada, from my understanding. Um, maybe my understanding is flawed. But from my understanding, there's like a lot of pharmaceutical stuff in it. There's more pharma pharmaceutical shenaniganry that goes on that in America than there is in Canada when it comes to like kickbacks for doctors because we have socialized medicine. Um, some socialized medicine. Uh, but, let's see, her question was, what was the question here? Um, do doctors get kickbacks from insurance, insurance com uh, companies for vaccine scheduling like i don't know what the correlation is there because that doesn't really make sense to me because like again we're back to the this is probably the thing your video should be about this is the thing that you should be this is the thing that you should be discussing this is the thing that you should be showing this was 38 minutes you would think well, they're receiving money. <laughs> there is a, fin a financial incentive to vaccinate your child, which is why even if you say, I just want to delay the schedule, they say your child can't be here. So is this about health? Is this about them actually wanting to make your child better? Or has this become about profit? Are they being motivated by profit? It's about you putting other children at risk. It, it... And since I know that no two children are the same. I have two children. There's me and my sisters are not the same. Our allergies are different. Like I said, I had a horrible reaction to Gardasil. My older sister had no reaction to Gardasil. How could you look a parent in the eye and say that we Wait, know? are you saying now that you had a pre-existing allergy? Is she just clarifying that the reason the vaccine the vaccine didn't injure her really at all it was actually a pre-existing allergy that she didn't she wasn't aware of and she had an allergic reaction <sighs> What If she she was literally earlier complaining that we we take care we go out of our way in society to make sure that children with with allergies get a chance to survive by banning certain like like things like peanut butter in places where kids are too small to to take care of themselves in a in a relatively consistent way and then turn around and is and and is implying that we shouldn't give those kids that protection and now she's sitting here being like but i'm one of those children 
This is so convoluted. This is so convoluted. I don't know how anyone's supposed to learn anything about vaccines from this video. This that I haven't learned a single thing about vaccines at all. She hasn't taught she gave a list of what might be in a vaccine and but she didn't like really go into it and what any of those things were. She just read off a list. Like this <laughs> What is this? How is this supposed to be like, oh yeah, this is the magnum opus of the anti vax communities. This is this is the big gotcha guys. I <laughs> This video is full of big fucking stinking nothing, man. I don't... What? What a fucking joke. Actually, to be honest, I, th I think we're doing pretty good getting through this video. Good job, us. That this I feel one good. size fits all treatment is exactly what you need. What is motivating you saying something what? that we know to be so fundamentally untrue? Children are born different sizes. Uh, they have a different capacity to be able to to take things in. Uh, no, no, that's adults not what a vaccine is or does. It it just enables your body. It's like a training regimen. It's, it's. I feel like the anti-vax people don't actually know what a vaccine. Is. Like that's what that's where we're that's where we've come to. Anti-vaxxers don't know what vaccines are. The thing that they're against, that they hate so much, they don't even know what they are. Did I just not add- okay, so I need to add in a question right at the beginning. What is a vaccine? What is a vac? What, what are you? What is a vaccination? Right? And yet, this is the reason why they are so systematic at the pediatrician's office. Again, we're going to talk about that later. Systematic. Uh, in this, throughout the series, the financial incentive, incentives that are motivating your pediatrician to say, I would rather you not be a child uh, at this firm because I'm not going to make money off of your child. That's essentially what she was saying to me. And we did. That is not what she said to you at all, <laughs> even in your own description. The next thing that I want to talk about is fear. That is the number one element. Uh, they use fear they, as a driver. They know that's that there what is you're no doing. That that's you. This whole video, you are using fear as a driver. You are fear mongering for money because this is promotion. This is promotion for your new series that is coming out, which is a series that you already did that you're doing again. That is you a paid service and subscription. Oh my god. <laughs> that is more vulnerable than a new parent. Uh, there is nothing that is more motivating than the idea that your new baby is going to die unless you do exactly what they say. And that thing that they say always lines their pockets, right? And if you ask a question, I just remember the fears that I had as a first time mom. I mean, the first time you leave the hospital, you're thinking in your head, like, are they really just gonna let me take this baby? Is this responsible? I don't know what to do, it's a new baby. And they know, those feelings that you have, which is why they- Then you should get educated before you decide to become a parent. Then there should be free education for people to help them and training and learning uh, tools available for new parents. Things like, you know, planned parenthood. Wow, it's all weird. I don't know, I don't know man, that sounds crazy to me. What a concept. Candace, Candace, stop making arguments for things that you're against. Come in and they say to you, this is what you have to do. They prey on that fear. They prey on how you are feeling as a new parent. They're constantly preying you on had nine months emotional to this vulnerabilities. Shit. They are preying on the fact that you don't feel secure as a parent. And when I talk about fear as a motivator, I just want to let you guys know, when I had first announced that I was doing this series, when I was doing it outside of the Daily Wire, some of the tweets that we instantly got uh, from doctors was absolutely stunning. So this is just one example. Dr. Sangeeta Reddy said, and by the way, just to make it clear, what I tweeted was this. I tweeted, in two weeks, I'm dropping a free video mm -hmm. series, 11 episodes, to go through the history of every single childhood vaccination on the schedule. It's taken me almost two years to research. I want parents wow. to truly have informed- You history. spent two years, as opposed to how many years do doctors spend? Especially some people who study virology. Actually, hold on, I'm gonna- Hold on. I'm gonna make that a question. How many... 
how many years do doctor slash virologists study? Question mark. <clears throat> uh, well, I mean, the fact that she's been looking at this for two years and hasn't actually gone over any of this. And this is like an hour-long, what, intro video? Is there supposed to be a part two that's free? Because that's not what was said at the beginning. Unless I just misunderstood. But Sense. There's nothing in that tweet that if you were a doctor should scare you. I said I'm going no, to No, it's, it's, it's you that's saying it. That's why it's scary. <laughs> People don't trust you. Doctors don't trust you it, you are the problem that they're worried about not that somebody went and looked it's because you're part of the daily wire well i guess not anymore since you got fired but you know whatever go through the history of childhood vaccination why would that scare you if i talk to parents about the history of vaccines like hey gardasil because you should talk to doctors why also you? not just parents well dr sangita reddy was terrified she How tweeted this is truly terrifying if we lose the battle on vaccine misinformation, it could have devastating hashtag public health consequences. Yes. The anti-vax movement may be focused on COVID-19 right now, but if they destroy public trust in childhood hashtag vaccines, imagine what impact on the world. Imagine yes. the resurgence of polio, measles, whooping cough, childhood, TB, etc. We must prevent this at all costs. Hey, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. So this was from February 2022. It is now 2024. By the way, just to be clear, this is from this is from 2024, and there are currently outbreaks of the measles in multiple places across America. We looked at this on Friday. There are this is a, this thing that this doctor was warning about is currently happening. I hope people do not dismiss the power many quote-unquote influencers have on the hashtag public health narrative <laughs> wow that is she is terrified wow all i said was Correct. you discuss the history of some vaccines and the doctors rush in she yeah that's the not UN what you said <laughs> i like how you i like how impressive it is that she can read out loud what she said and then immediately lie about what she said this tweet she wanted the united nations to come and take a look at kenneth owen's saying she's gonna talk to other mommies and daddies about vaccine history she could not yes. do this she is not a doctor what is she thinking how dare parents talk to each other how dare they look into the information they can't understand the information we're too stupid we're just parents yeah Make that's that not what it said but yeah you don't i hate to be the bearer of bad news yeah being a parent doesn't automatically mean you're educated in something i hate to be the bear it doesn't even mean that you're educated in your own child the way you're educated in your own child is by spending time with and learning about your own child. It's not intuitive. She has no idea what the fuck she's talking about. And people know you're- it's not like you don't have a reputation, Candace. <laughs> don't pretend you don't. <laughs> oh, we're just gonna do this? No, you've been fear-mongering this entire video. What do you mean? And actually, that's a. I think that's a. That's a reasonable question. Has uh, the anti-vax movement had a negative effect? Has the anti-vax movement had a negative effect on public health? Question mark. Worldwide or locally? I think that's a solid question. Like, I think that's reasonable. I mean, I have my suspicions about what I think the answer is, but I think it's I think it'll be a good question to ask somebody who's more of a professional in the field. And I want to get the timestamp for that uh for the tweets. I wonder if Candace put that date on purpose or if she did that by accident. This was 40, 41, 40, 41, 40. Nice. Dr. Sangita Reddy was terrified. She tweeted, this is truly terrifying. 
If we lose the battle on vaccine misinformation, ago. it could happen. Um, March 8th. This is a recent video. Have devastating hashtag public health consequences. The anti-vax movement may be focused on COVID-19 right now, but if they destroy public trust in childhood hashtag vaccines, and this doctor is also right. She's making this and talking about making videos about other stuff, right? Imagine what impact on the world. Imagine the resurgence of polio, measles, whooping cough, childhood, TB, etc. We must prevent- By the way, congratulations, everybody. We don't have to imagine anymore. This at all costs. I hope people do not dismiss the power many quote-unquote influencers have on the hashtag public health narrative. <laughs> Wow, that is, she is terrified. Wow, all I said was, you know, discuss the history of some vaccines. And the doctor's Russian, she tags the UN in this tweet. She wanted United Nations to come and take a look at Candace Owens, saying she's going to talk to other mommies and daddies about that. Hey, Candace, don't you think that if you were actually so concerned for these vaccines that are going to your children in America and are going to children around the world, you would want the UN to look into it? Don't you think that you would want the UN to watch your video? Don't you think that that's something you would want, Candace? If it's such a conspiracy, don't you think you would want the UN to look into it? Because that would be a human rights violation, Candace. Do you know what a human rights violation is, Candace? <laughs> Clown. vaccine history she could not do this she is not a doctor what is she thinking how dare parents talk to each other? how dare they think? look into the information they no. can't understand the information we're too stupid we're just yes. parents you think that's bad you are too Which stupid see this guy's tweet because the next one that i saw was even more to the point and i actually have to say i think i appreciate his honesty dr zachary rubin came in and said yeah, when millions of people follow up, I have a question on if these if if she actually verified these people were um were doctors or not. Also, no date on this one. Political commentator: A few people will start to be confused or empowered to uh -huh. question a safe and effective medical intervention. Oh, <gasps> could you uh -huh. imagine parents feeling empowered to question? He is telling you what he really thinks. I love this tweet because he is telling you what he really thinks. And, and you are absolutely correct, Dr. Rubin. My goal is to make parents feel empowered enough to ask questions. Because believe it or not, we have a right to do that. We have a right as parents to ask questions. And uh, the idea that they had this reaction. Yeah, the problem is, is that you don't accept the answers. Before I had even launched one episode, before I had actually said anything, they uh -huh. had such a visceral reaction to the idea that parents might become empowered enough to ask a question. No, they were f concerned about you, Candace. You are the thing that they're concerned about. Parents ask questions to doctors all the time. That is not their concern. Their concern is that you're the one putting this out and they knew, and you knew, that you were putting out misinformation. That was their concern. You know, the thing that you get concerned about, your, that your whole video is based on, people putting out misinformation and lying to people and using spooky language to scare them into making bad decisions for themselves so they can make money? It's you. It was you the whole time. Hi, fuck. How you doing, buddy? What's up? I have tea. You looking for something? Do you eat your food? Is it good? You want to have a bath? No, you don't. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. You are very cute. Would you like to roll this D20? Uh, it's a D10. You want to see this D10? You can't eat it. It's not food. You want to roll it? No? Okay. Boop. That's from Athens. You got booped. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I bothering you? Where's your ball? 
Yeah, you got your ball. Nope. Back at this bitch. That should uh that should tell you something, guys. That should make it very clear that <laughs> doctors they think you're that a threat. They are yeah. authoritarian on the matter. <laughs> that if you ask a question, you are stepping out of line, and that in my view, these are things that need to be changed. So let's talk about some of their bullying tactics. Authoritarian. She thinks people are, the doctors are authoritarian. No, they just don't want you in their space causing problems because that's literally what you built, built your whole brand off of is you going into things you don't understand and causing problems for literally everybody and making everybody's life more difficult. You you literally identify as a problem. It's like... <laughs> Hello, it's me, I'm the problem, it's me. Like, I... Imagine being, like, that person. Like, I would have to try so much harder to ever identify myself as much of a problem as Candace Owens. This woman has, like, done work. This this woman has put in work. Respect the work. To, to, to be considered this much of a problem. <laughs> It's actually kind of impressive, I mean. As somebody who also identifies as a problem, <laughs> it's a lot of work to be considered to have somebody say, oh, I'm making a video, and fucking people say they're gonna contact the UN. I guess in my defense, I have also had people tagging the FBI saying that they don't like my YouTube video. So, I mean, I guess me and Candace are on the same level when it comes to notoriety that way. <laughs> Lucky me. Look at me go. Dress for the job that you want, not the job that you have me puts on Hitler stash. <laughs> I'm kidding, that's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke for anybody who knows what the hell's been going on recently. Uh, insert Hitler stash here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a silly goober face. Don't mind me. Oh, I didn't want to actually grab that. I'm, I'm not. I'm staying in. Uh... Staying in black and whites for now. What can I say except of this you're fear welcome. complex that they try to create outside of them saying we are the authority and how dare you even ask us a question? They are the authority, and how dare you, Candace Owens, even ask them a question? Talking to your pediatrician and asking questions is fucking normal. Everybody does it all the time. It is a normal behavior. It is a normal conversation that happens. That's not what you're encouraging, Candace. That's not what you're doing. What you're encouraging is medical illiteracy and scientific illiteracy through fear and stubbornness or via via fear and stubbornness i should say that's a better better term for it that's the difference they're not concerned about their their client like the, the parents they're working with asking questions they're concerned about you <laughs> being a problem because you're a problem. Your whole network's a problem. Shot in the dark, goofy ass. What we're really facing, number one, is the non-expert problems. Essentially, they say, we are the doctors and you are not. And we should just trust them because they have fancy medical jargon. Like, for example, one... No, one it's not because of the jargon. It's because they spent decades studying this shit. Term hyperbilirubinemia. That really just means extreme jaundice, but of course they say these really big words because they want you to feel stupid. And when they talk to each other, they sound so much more educated. Another no, that's philosophy that they use <laughs> is anachronisms. This is something that you will see over and over again because I, I want you. She to says using the word anachronisms. Anachronism essentially is. When they say, if you don't do exactly what they... we say, it's going to be just like the Spanish flu. You see this, that's what that doctor, Sangita Reddy, just did, right? She instantly said, we're going to have polio, we're going to have measles, we're going to be back in the 1800s, and all the kids are going to be dying of scarlet fever. 
Um, they do these sorts of things, and they do love to bring up the Spanish flu of 1918, and it's completely ridiculous and entirely illogical. Um, obviously, in 1918, you're talking about an entirely different world. There can be no oh, realistic Oh, I'm comparison. sorry. Do you mean that medicine has advanced since then, and so it's a completely because our medicine has advanced, it's not something we need to be concerned about. How did that medicine advance? How did we manage to do that? Was it by doing what people who are educated in the field figured out and learned what to do? Way to undermine your own point. God, you're irritating. <laughs> the illnesses that were suffered in 1918 <laughs> versus 2023 in America. In 1925, so that's seven years later, only half of American houses even had electrical power, okay? So? It, by the 1930s is when indoor plumbing and running water became readily available. So and? when they say it's going to be just like 1918, they're talking about a time when the majority of households they didn't, didn't say that <laughs> they didn't say it'll be just like night 1819 they said that there will be an outbreak of a disease that we haven't had to worry about since 1819 idiot learn how to read water and electricity ladies and gentlemen it is never going to be just like the 1918 spanish flu and they know that they know that it's impossible it's why they also you'll see impossible, use ge guys. geographical anachronisms they'll go to like it's going to be just like you know what's happening in africa oh that's interesting because in africa they don't have running water in certain places so it's never going all right to be how about just this like it's now 2024 and candace this video came out in 2024 meaning that you could have looked this up it's just like what we're seeing with an outbreak of measles in New York. Right the fuck now. Africa. One of my operating theories here, and we're going to unpack that in oh later episodes, God. is that Big Pharma has taken the credit for what sanitation, basic sanitation solved. Yes, with the explosion of running water and electricity and people that were better able to cleanse themselves, we saw a lot of diseases that were wiped away. And Big Pharma claims credit. They said, oh, it's because of us, right? We did that. This is the reason why we don't have this anymore. But conspicuously missing is why we don't also have things that they didn't create vaccines for, like scarlet fever. There's no scarlet fever vaccine. How did scarlet fever just go away? How did all of these old diseases just go away? Well, because we got cleaner. Right? We became more sanitized uh, as a society, but they don't want you to think that. Instead, they want you to think that those things went away. Guys, you, we only had COVID because people don't shower enough. There were too many neckbeards at Comic-Con. God, this woman's a moron. Because thank goodness they created so, vaccines. Thank goodness magic. they created Gardasil. Hey, Candace. Thank goodness they created a tetanus shot. I have a quick question. Wait until we get into the history. I have a quick question. If the issue is sanitation, and, like, a lot of deaths would have been prevented by sanitation. Like, you know, just basic soap. Why didn't God give us soap? Why didn't God give us soap? That's one of my biggest arguments against a God that gives two shits about us. Why didn't he give us soap? I feel like soap should have been something we started with. <laughs> I feel like we should have started with soap. That would have given us a pretty big advantage early on there. <laughs> so. <laughs> mm. All right, we're getting closer. Of the tetanus shot, guys, that is going to be insane. Should that be one of the questions? Why isn't there a vaccine for scarlet fever? That should be one of the questions. Why isn't isn't there a vax for scarlet fever fever actually i'm kind of curious about scarlet fever now hold on let me let me go back to the wikipedia all right scarlet fever it's an infectious disease uh, most commonly affects children between 5 and 15 Signs and symptoms are throat, sore throat, blah, 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 lymph nodes, characteristic crash. Uh, develops in a small number of people who have strep throat. Bacteria are usually spread because it's a bac. Because hmm. it's a bacteria, not a virus, maybe? Um, 
Like, I'm wondering if that question is, there is no vaccine for scarlet fever. Prevention is frequent hand washing, not sharing personal items, and staying away from other people when sick. The disease is treatable with antibodies. Reduces symptoms, blah, 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 blah. In the early 20th century, is the cause of death of many children, but even before World War, it was because it's a bacteria, right? Like, am I crazy? Like, the reason why there isn't a vaccine for... Am I dumb? Anyway. I'll ask a professional later. Then, of course, another bullying tactic that they use is emotional blackmail. We've kind of unpacked this. This is, if you don't do this, your child is going to die. That's this nobody is good saying for your that. child. Why would you deprive them of this? What kind of a parent are you? What do, how could you even ask this question? What, how, what's wrong with you? Do you want your kid to die? You do, you want, you, I mean, I just, I can't even believe you're asking the question. This was kind of the attitude that that initial pediatrician had with me. It was sort of like, how could you even like, wow, are you good? Like you would even expose your child to anything? Like, Candace, there's lots of people who ask a question about whether or not you're a good person. Candace, <laughs> this, whether or not you're a good question, a good person is, isn't really something that's in question for a lot of reasons, but you know, <laughs> you're, no, your the short answer is no, you're not a good person telling you this is what's right why don't you just blanket trust us and that is emotional blackmail you shouldn't be making decisions because you arbitrarily believe that your child is going to die you should be making decisions because arbitrarily you because you knowledge and because you yes i hate to say it dr rubin because you asked questions and you got reasonable answers and finally the it says last a lot tactic of inference that they in there use a lot of heavy lifting is they manipulate data and they manipulate definitions. They manipulate and really data you saw and this. definitions. You just told us a story about how you tried to manipulate semantics about not wanting a not vaccinated child running around an office with vulnerable people. You're, god damn it. Again, I believe that COVID was a blessing because I don't believe that what? people would have been so receptive to this. Did she just say, I believe COVID was a blessing? She's actively manipulating data as we speak. Yes, she's manipulating the statistics. She's only presenting certain parts of the numbers, etc., etc. Actually just said that she believes COVID was a blessing. Also, the other reason there seems to be no, there's no uh, vaccine for scarlet fever is because there's no need for one. If it's preventable in other measures, why wouldn't you just do that? Actually, that goes against her conspiracy theory, doesn't it? If her conspiracy theory is that they are making vaccines to make money off of you, then wouldn't you think they would make unnecessary vaccines? So if the way to prevent scarlet fever is not through vaccination but through hand washing, or why wouldn't they make a vaccine and, and shill it anyway? Well, that's what she's trying to say people are doing, but then again gave us an example where that's not happening. this message had it not have happened we you'll see this throughout we're going to unpack polio as just one example where they just magically changed the definition of polio they changed the diagnostic definition of polio which they changed the diagnostic definition of polio okay hold on 48 45 in 19 uh this is cut out prior to 19 54, large numbers of these cases undoubtedly were mislabeled as paralytic poliomyelitis, thus, uh, thus simply by changing in diagnostic criteria, the number of paralytic cases was predetermined to decrease in 1955 to 1957 whether or not the vaccine was used. At the time, at the same time, the number of non-paralytic cases was bound to increase because any case of poliomyelitis-like disease, which could not be classified as paralytic polio, polio whatever, the, 
according to the new criteria, was classified as non-paralytic. Many of these cases, although reported as such, were not non-paralytic. If this inaccurate number of cases of non-paralytic polio reported in 1957 is accepted as accurate and considered as a base for subsequent comparison, it is no wonder that we now say non-paralytic cases went down in 1958. This isn't a paper. This is somebody writing an essay. This is somebody made, like writing a writing a. I wonder what the source for this is. Um. Okay. So let's um. Oh, why did the definition the diagnostic? Because it's not the definition; it's the diagnostic criteria that changed. So that so to, to be clear what diagnostic criteria means because this is something that Candace should be explaining she should exp she should be defining what diagnostic criteria is because what diagnostic criteria is is basically like this set required to diagnose something so like if you want to identify a fever it needs to have this list of it needs to check these boxes so you can say yeah that's the fever it has to have these things and so if they changed the criteria, then yeah, it would fuck with the numbers. But that would only fuck with the numbers of one year. Maybe. As, like, as the switchover is happening. But it's not, it doesn't really, what about, what's her point? But knowing why the criteria changed is interesting. Okay, let me make sure I spell this right. Polio, poliomyelitis change. Also, what is diagnostic criteria? And this was 48. I'm going to go with 48. 45, I think would be the best. Sorry, 4840. I'm just going to click it back a little bit just so I can get the, a good timestamp. Oh, did I go forward? Whoops, my bad. Let's put it here. That people would have been so receptive to this message had it not have happened. We, You'll see this throughout. We're going to unpack polio as just one example where they just magically change the definition. Yeah, here we go. 40. Yeah, 40 is a good spot. We'll go 39 just to give us that extra little thing. 39. Okay. They changed the diagnostic definition of polio, which led to a decrease in the amounts of polio. They said, well, that's no longer polio in 1954. The AMA, AMA just yeah, changed it. Did. And you'll see this happen over and over again. This happened throughout the times of COVID. So you saw COVID dip and, and COVID cases go up, depending on how high the PCR tests were dialed. Um, to give you one example of how they control data and definitions, and this one really infuriates me. Um, this is more of a critique about the video. What is PCR? This is supposed to be an educational video. This is supposed to be the, the definitive magnum opus. Define it. You're supposed to, you, you just complained about people using jargon. Define it. Define your term. As much as I did just say, though, that that was a problem with the video, that's also a problem with her argumentation. She's complaining about the thing that she's doing. She does this a lot, just in this one video. I don't watch a whole ton of Candace Owens, as you might be able to tell. I, d I'm not, I don't particularly care. Um, this was sent to me by an anti-vaxxer, and I was told to watch this. And it was going, because I asked, what is a vaccine? And this is the video they sent me. You know what Candace has not done? She hasn't defined what a vaccine is. Oh, if I typed out what was on screen, yeah. Let's see. Hold on. Let's see if he's got. If she's got down here. Um. Tracking present state of polio vaccine medical journal. Maybe is this one.
Um. Uh, All right, ladies and gentlemen. Where sorry, shut the fuck up. Um. Um. Uh, this is the only one I think that it could be, but it goes to this, which. Um, doesn't look. <laughs> abstract, similar articles, no abstract. Do I have to click this? What if I click this one? I'm going back and forth in circles. How do I read it? Is it this one? How do I re How do I read it? It's not letting me read it. Full text. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Ah. Uh, abstract. <laughs> By article PDF download. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Needless to say, her citations blow ass. <laughs> I I would probably have a better time just googling like a line out of the uh out of the article, yeah. Happened I I am from Connecticut. I grew up in Stamford, Connecticut. You guys know that probably by now. My sisters still live in Connecticut. And during your sisters the time of COVID, to you. both of them were pregnant at the same time with their first child. And I remember them calling me and they were so scared because the governor, the current governor, Ned Lamont, had sent out a tweet. And the tweet read, it is with heartbreaking sadness today that we can confirm the first pediatric fatality in Connecticut linked to hashtag COVID-19. A six week old newborn from the Hartford area was brought unresponsive to a hospital late last week and could not be revived. Uh -huh. Testing confirmed last night that the newborn was COVID-19 positive. Uh -huh. This is absolutely heartbreaking. We believe this is one of the youngest lives lost anywhere due to complications relating to COVID-19. This is a virus that attacks our most fragile without mercy. This also stresses the importance of staying home and limiting exposure to other people. Your life and the lives of others could literally depend. What was she saying about people not being allowed to talk about this virus at the time? And this is a tweet from 20, April 1st, 2020. This is from April 1st, 2020. Could you imagine that if this tweet was a fucking April Fool's joke? <laughs> That'd be terrible on it our prayers are with the family at this difficult time uh-huh okay i'm really gonna try to stay calm in talking about this because i was the person who broke the story on this and i was personally went to go pursue the truth of this because as i said my sisters were traumatized by this you imagine you yeah, have you blame your sisters your for this. children you live okay. in the state of connecticut and your leader a governor writes authors this tweet that the first infant linked to covid19 has died I am not kidding when I say that my In little this sister area. did not leave the house. She did not allow us to see the child. Um, uh -huh. She was truly suffering a traumatic psychosis, worried. Psychosis? That, any person that touched her baby. Psychosis? How do you know that she was suffering psychotic psychosis? Are you a professional? I'm pretty sure you didn't say you were a doctor. Did they get a medical examination? You're going to accuse somebody of having traumatic psychoses. You're going to have to do something to back that shit up. Also, did your sister agree for you to put out her medical history like that on the internet? Oh my god. And let's just say your sister did overreact. So the fuck what? That doesn't make anything untrue of the scenario. He was going to give her baby COVID. Uh, and of course... Well, of course she felt this way. I mean, how would you feel as a new parent when this is the information that you get from an authority? What do you mean? You can't call it a traumatic psychosis and then say it was normal and to be expected. That's not what's like... Whatever. But there was something about this tweet that I didn't like. I didn't like that he said a pediatric fatality linked to COVID-19. I responded and I said, what, what does that mean, linked to COVID-19? What are the details here? I decided to do some digging and I... 
uh-huh. put out a public notice saying I'm from Connecticut and I believe that Ned Lamont is lying. And if anybody has information re- related to this death, please reach out to me. Um, I was mm-hmm. somebody reached out to me and I am going to protect that person's identity. And they said he is 100 percent lying. The infant that died did not die from COVID-19. The infant had a mother who was a drug addict who accidentally smothered the infant to death. That is why the infant. How did you verify this? What the fuck? This is the news article, I assume. In March, Hartford Cor- Corrent, whatever the fuck this is. Months later, medical examiner says the baby had COVID-19 but did not die from it. Lung tissue from the 60, 61 and a half, sorry, six and a half week old infant tested by the CDC confirmed a COVID-19 infection. But the chief medical chief chief states medical examiner said on Friday, not enough is known about how the virus impacts infants to know if it had any role in the baby's death. Unsafe sleep in the bassinet with soft bedding as a reason for the sudden death. That SIDS is a thing or compromised sleeping conditions. Therefore, there is no definitive cause of death at that at the autopsy. What? What? Okay. Well, so Candace just accused a woman of smothering her child, um, and that appears to not be what this says. Uh, so that's a thing. Um, what the fuck? This article doesn't say what Candace says it says. The problem is is that she made a post saying that someone was lying without even having evidence that the dude was lying. She just said she was lying. Yeah, and then she got confirmed by a random person that she's not going to clarify who they are, what they are, or if they know anything. And then she's going to post us an article that doesn't say what she just said infant arrived unresponsive to the hospital because the infant had been smothered by its own mother accidentally. And then after the infant arrived to the hospital already unresponsive and dead, they decided to test the infant. No, unresponsive and dead are not the same thing. For COVID-19 with the PCR test that was dialed high, and they decided that the infant also had COVID. How did you know that it was dialed high? Where'd you get that information from? And so rather than telling parents this, Ned Lamont raced to be the first governor to say that we had an infant who died from complications related to COVID. The compli- Yeah, it is. Considering what we know, this is 2024, Candace. You would think you would learn something. We know that is an infectious disease inside of the lungs. We know that babies are sensitive when sleeping and can be quote unquote accidentally smothered. You don't think that having a disease inside of your fucking lungs that makes it difficult to breathe already would count towards somebody accidentally smothering their child because of the sleeping conditions made it difficult for them to breathe, you insane person? Just because you don't like Kofefe? Nutter. Applications were not related to COVID whatsoever. I put this information out into the universe, and sure enough, he began to walk back. He refused to answer any questions pertaining to the death. Reporters were not aggressive enough in asking questions. He essentially said he didn't even want to talk about Yeah, people didn't want to fucking deal with you. People not wanting to deal with your insane ramblings isn't confirmation that you're right. Because you also say that people who do try to address your insane ramblings is them being defensive and thus proving that they're wrong. You're trying to have your cake and eat it too. People's reactions and response to not wanting to deal with your stupid ass is not... like 
it isn't indicative one way or another because you're a fucking embarrassment about the case anymore. Do you know how angry how did you verify I am your source? that this man is still the governor of Connecticut? Because he wanted to make international headlines related to infants dying from COVID. And he lied. And now you're, um, now you're inferring additional intention onto the person, onto the governor. Hey, listen, I don't like politicians as much as the next person, but you're crazy. To the public and he traumatized mothers everywhere. Uh-huh. There is a special place in hell that is reserved for Governor Ned Lamont. I believe that. What the the fuck up, Candace? You have to be a special kind of evil to do this to young mothers. You're doing this. I this information. You're doing this to young mothers. You are fear-mongering these stories that's going to encourage young mothers to not vaccinate their kids and is going to cause more child deaths, both for the vaccinated and unvaccinated kids out there because it's going to spread more disease. There's a special place in hell for you. You're describing yourself. And it's nice of you to choose your own hell, I guess. Good job. And I am telling you that because we are talking about just how far they will go. They control the data. They control the definitions. So what he did was he had that infant tested, got that information that that PCR test said COVID positive. And then he controlled how that information was presented to the public by saying linked Oh, and by linked, we mean in a post. It was linked. It's related. Suffocating is linked if your lungs are full of disease and you can't breathe. Hello? It's related, period. How related it is is whatever, up to your dumbass speculation. But your dumbass speculation isn't worth anything. Postmortem, we decided that that baby could have also had COVID, according to this test that we dialed up. That is... You're adding this dialed up thing. You're literally just making this up off of the article. Damn shame that I actually looked at the article. What we are facing when we talk about uh, Big Pharma and their collusion with Big governments uh, to censor Twitter. information and to control the flow of information because ultimately what they want to do is inspire you to act one way or another. And in this circumstance, he wanted to inspire you have a massive platform to stay in their homes, to stay locked down in their homes with their children. If people were controlling the platforms like the way you're describing, you wouldn't have a show. And to, of course, when the vaccine became available, instantly get that vaccine. So we are going to pause there because we are already coming to the end of an hour. It goes by so fast, unbelievably. Um, huh. What we are going to be discussing in next episode is the vitamin K shots. It's just a vitamin, they say. It's just a vitamin. Uh, you are going to be shocked as we unpack that. You guys, I, I do also want to just let you know how excited I am to bring us a Daily Wire. Um, it was not something that was ever on their radar. Obviously, I am not speaking for any of the other hosts, for anybody that work at the Daily Wire. When I say that I... <laughs> I'm not speaking for any of the other hosts at the Daily Wire. I don't fax my children. It is not a Daily Wire perspective. But what essentially happened was I created that series uh, personally and for free for everyone on the internet when I first did it, the first 11 episodes. And then my show here at Daily Wire got picked up for five five days a week. And I sat down with the executives and I said, you know, I am so grateful to be given a platform here at the Daily Wire. But the most important thing that I do is the shot in the dark stuff. The most important thing that I do is empowering parents uh, to ask questions. And they were really receptive to it. And oh we my talked God. about all the ways that we could grow it because obviously we're going to run out of vaccines to talk about. And I want it to be bigger than that. I want it. Uh, there woman's are ridiculous. so many more things that are impacting our children. So many more things that we can talk about. And I want to make sure that we keep this discussion going. I want your feedback. You guys, you can email you me. You do not want my feedback, Candace I promise. At dailywire.com. With any questions, uh, I do want to find a place where we can plug all the links. Uh, right now, we are going to keep the first few episodes free because we want people that maybe potentially, like I said early on, 
don't love Candace Owens and hate all of her viewpoints politically, we still want them to be able to access this information and to see what this show is about for a few episodes. Eventually, we will take it. You want to promote it? Yeah, we get it. Because we have to. It is big pharma. Stop pretending it's like um, anything but that. They will eventually come down and say that you are not allowed to even be having this discussion. So you can definitely get a jump by joining Daily Wire Plus (laughs) to make sure that you have access to all of the episodes eventually. <laughs> you can do that by clink- clicking the link in the description and subscribing right So it's right free, now. but it's not free, and but it's free, but it's not free. also you see in the description free. that we are listing the links to all of the sources that we use in this week's episode. You guys, I am <clears throat> at my core really just a mom, and I am <laughs> sure that I may make a mistake somewhere, and I give you my <laughs> commitment that when I do that, I will always try to make a correction in the next episode uh we are researching all right do you guys think that they're gonna make any corrections uh if they're given if if this they're uh you think they think that's gonna happen you think they're actually gonna correct anything no (laughs) first episode was a mistake we are honing in on the details but please remember that what i'm trying to do here is to make all of this very accessible to you and I just want to appreciate you guys. If you want to make it accessible, then you should define the terms. And stop using jargon. For all of you that supported A Shot in the Dark, when it really was just me in my home, uh, sitting down with Savannah and one other person. And it's you guys are the reason that I brought it back. So thank you guys so much. Be sure to check out dailywire.com. No. Subscribe to Daily Wire Plus. No. We'll see you guys next week. I'm not gonna. Next week. Okay, so there should be another episode out. Then, right? Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Top G. Andrew Tate detained again. What is happening? I... (laughs) Joe Rogan to prison. Eight gate women face on steroids. What the fuck? Okay, so there doesn't seem to be another shot in the dark episode. Um, I don't care about the shorts. Um, so I wonder if the right, reason ladies. why there's no second episode was because she's not working for the Daily L- Wire anymore. I, I would suspect, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to tell you guys. I got no answers. None. None answers. Well, what do you guys think? I think I got some pretty good questions. I'll read out the questions that I have, and you guys let me know if you think there's any more that needs to be to be added or tweaked a little bit. Whoa. Added or tweaked a little bit. <sighs> we got, what is a vaccine? What is the term vax injured mean? She never defined vax injured, by the way. She just said that. Um, number of vaccines given in 1962 versus current uh, vax schedules. Um, do you feel like children today are more healthy than in 1962? United States of America has the most vax, therefore American kids should be the healthiest. Vax that can prevent cancer, uh, Gardasil. Um, so basically I'm just gonna ask, like, what is Gardasil and what is it supposed to do? Um, I'm gonna reword that for myself. What is... Gardis guard guard cell and what is it supposed to do? Question mark. Uh, how did they magic magically figure out that Gardasel could do something for men? Penile cancer question mark? She never went into that either. She just made that statement and then never explained it. Why are people getting 
the Gardasil Vax when they enter school if it's for a ST if it's for an STD. What is HPV? Do doctors get kickbacks from insurance companies for vax scheduling? How many years do doctors and virologists study? Has the vax movement had a negative effect on public health, worldwide or locally? Why isn't there a vax for scarlet fever? Why did the diagnostic criteria for polio change? And what is the diagno what is diagnostic criteria? Like, what does that term mean? What do you think? You think those are all pretty good questions? I think I'm pretty happy with those questions. I, th I think that'll be a pretty solid, like... I think that can be a pretty solid video. What is left? Baby, don't hurt me. We finish each other's sandwiches. That's what I was gonna say. <sighs> Alright, that's all I had. I gotta go do some more scheduling. This stream is a little bit shorter than I intended. I, I had planned to go for four hours, but I think I'm gonna probably start wrapping it up here because we kind of went through what we want to do. And I feel like if I start something else, it's gonna end up being like a whole nother five hours and I can't... I've got too much to do to be here for that much longer. <laughs> I'm trying to like slowly buff my schedule up, so I'll be here longer and longer every day for the next couple of days. Um, my room might change, I might be on screen next time. Let me know if you guys liked this format. I think I like it. It, it puts a little bit less stress on me for not having it- <clears throat> not be actually being on camera is a little bit less stressful for me. Vax scheduling? Vax till dawn? Bias confirmed. Vax scheduling? No, no. Stream scheduling. Streams! Streams! I scream, you scream, we all scream. In the giant house fire that killed the family. Puck usually comes by. He's sitting nearby right now, actually. He's just outside the door. <sighs> this seems like a good schedule time for me. I want to stream a little bit earlier in the day. I don't want to be... I want to be done by... I want to I wanna stream for four to five hours a day is where I'm starting from. I want to extend that from um, five to six hours eventually, but I want to start at nine in the morning and stream until about two. Cut off at three, 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 three. All right, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best. What are we at? Oh, we're past that. We're past that on mine. I'm um, sorry. That would have been funny. Um. I'm gonna send you guys over to, uh, Minion777. Whoops. I didn't mean to. Hold on. Sorry, I gotta mute that. Okay. I'm gonna send you guys over. You guys can go ahead and raid. Um. And I'll catch you guys later. Enjoy your content warning. I'll be back tomorrow, hopefully at a little bit earlier of a time. I was a little bit slow going today, but... Oh, we'll be back soon. Okay. Bye!